get started before anybody else comes. <laughs> All right. Good evening, everyone. We'll call to order this meeting of the Stratford Zoning Commission on uh, August the 25th at 7 o'clock p.m. You know it for the record. Uh, uh, Ms. Manos, alternate member of the commission, is sitting in place of Commissioner uh, Vicola, regular member. For the record, petitions to be heard this evening were advertised in the Connecticut Post on August 12th and August uh, 19th. And let's see here. I'll read off, are we taking up petition one? Okay. Okay, petition number one is text amendment petition of the Stratford Zoning Commission seeking to amend section 3.30 of the zoning regulations to extend a moratorium on methadone clinics. Uh, Mr. Abansky. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so uh, in, let's see, 2000, June, on June 6, 2019, the Zoning Commission uh, adopted a moratorium on methadone clinics for a period of 24 months. Um, and, you know, given the past two years, uh, you know, towards the end of 2019, beginning of 2020, that kind of limited our ability to kind of collaborate with other commissions and, and do other work that uh, I know the commission was interested in doing regarding, um, you know, whether or not it was uh, in the town's best interest to explore uh, other options for the uh, allowing of methadone clinics in town. You know, none of that really happened over the past two years. Uh, so uh, I took it upon myself uh, while, uh, before I left for vacation to start putting together this extension of the methadone clinic moratorium. Um, typically, I like to uh, run this by the, the commission at a meeting for discussion. However, given the timing and the fact that you know, we, I assume the commission would not want to be surprised with a methadone clinic application. Uh, I took it upon myself to put together the moratorium uh, uh, extension. Uh, it would be, I'm just kind of following off of what was done uh, in years past. So I proposed a 24 uh, month moratorium and um, this would be expiring on September 15th, 2023. Uh, this application was referred to the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. We received feedback from uh, Ms. Sidoriak. Um, her review concluded that they had no comments at this time, and that there was no conflicts with the uh, Connecticut Coastal Management Act. That's a requirement of our uh, referral. This was also referred to the uh, Metropolitan Council of Governments. Uh, and we received no, no comments back from the Metropolitan Council of Governments. Um, so uh, the one other item that requires review for this application is the Planning Commission. Uh, this was referred to the Planning Commission, but not in time. They had already set their agenda, and they felt that this item would have been rushed if we had squeezed it on the agenda, which I understand. Uh, so they had asked that we open this item, but hold it open until they're able to uh, have their meeting next month and provide us with comments regarding a favorable or unfavorable recommendation, which I support that request. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm happy to answer any, any, any questions from the commission. Okay, questions from members? Ms. Janner? Could we vote on it this evening and wait for their response, or should we wait and no, I, it would be my recommendation that we do not vote, that we hold our discussion, offer any, uh, offer the public if they would like to have any, uh, give any public commentary, and then leave it open so that the record remains open and we can receive their recommendations formally into the, into the file. So we're, we're the last step? Final always, step. Always the last step in the process? Yeah. Okay. Okay, um, so I guess we should move to continue, or should I ask for any, um, well, is there, <laughs> there's nobody in the chamber, but if there's anybody here that would like to make any uh, comments in favor or opposition, hearing none, um, we'll take a motion to continue until our next, uh, 
September 22nd. Continue. Motion to continue, Mr. Henrich. I'll second, Mr. Vigliotti. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Carries unanimously. Okay, item number two, text amendment petition of Merit 8 Owners LLC seeking to amend section 5.3 and 6.3 of the zoning regulations regarding residence apartments in an OPD zone. Mr. Habansky. So uh, the applicant had reached out and uh, for the same reason of the referral to the planning commission, uh, they were unable to also get on the, that agenda. Therefore, they requested that this item be um, deferred until the, our next regular meeting on September 22nd. So they will not be presenting tonight. We'll take another motion to continue. Mr. Francis? Defer. Is there a sec to defer, continue. Oh, continue would be for an item that has been opened. Is opened, okay. So this one's to motion to defer by Mr. Francis, second by Ms. Manos. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Carries unanimously. That concludes the public hearing at 7.06, probably a world record. Uh, motion to close the public hearing. Mr. Pub Mr. Vigliotti, second. Mr. Francis, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Carries unanimously. We'll go into our administrative session. Um, we have a couple petitions on the table, so let's go through them one by one. Begin as we begin. Um, Mr. Henrik, you want to take uh, the first one off the table? Motion, and, and uh, it's 4060 Beach Street, the one you're referring to? Okay, motion by Mr. Henrik to take 4060 Beach Drive and 24 Washington Parkway Platypus Partners off the table. Is there a second? Mr. Vigliotti, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Carries unanimously. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, I'm, I'm going to make my motion, and I'm going to include in it some, some things that I should be included in it if we decided to approve it. Um, this way, we're not making all kinds of amendments. But these are just my thoughts. We can discuss them. We can, uh, we can change it. But I'll just, I'll just include these in, in it from the start. So. OK. Proceed, sir. And, and, and again, it, it'll be a motion in the affirmative. So I make a motion to approve. Uh, that approval would include a three foot high split rail fence around the street side perimeter of the property, a two foot high shrub in front of that split rail fence, only one opening into, uh, into the seating area. There should be no stand up service seating limited to 96 uh, any outdoor music hours would would be would need to cease by 6 p.m on sunday monday through thursday at 8 p.m friday through saturday at 10 p.m no amplified music and it all, and all uh, entertainment must adhere to the town sound ordinance i would request that we incorporate into it a six-month approval and, that, and, and after that, three one-year approvals uh, that the applicant would need to come back and, and uh, demonstrate to the administration that there have been no adverse um, violations of the rules before the, the, uh, before the next year's approval went forward. And, and I'll start with that, but okay. You can second it. You can second it. You can say something. You want to make that second, sir? Yeah. Oh, before before we do that too. Yeah. Um, and then and then one other piece would be that some sort of structure. He had talked about a band shell, mm -hmm. um, not to exceed 12 feet in height. Um, that wh whether it's made of cloth or a hard material that would direct the sound out towards uh, out towards Long Island Sound but not to exceed 12 feet high, and, and how he decides to uh, design it would, would be up to his, uh, up to his uh, dis decision, up to his choice, but it would not to be, because if he goes above 12 feet high, I think it would block the views of the house behind him, mm -hmm. but it would give some protection to the house, whether he has a roof over it, and again, if it's cloth, or if it's some type of a harder material, but not to exceed 12 feet in height. Okay. That would be my final piece at this point. Yes, sir. Um, so the reference on the um, proposal. Mm -hmm. um, now you said that it was a deferred permit, which is six months. 
So let, let's get a, a, a second first, and then we can, oh, right? Or, yeah, okay. if you can just make a second, then we can go through all the details. Yes, second by Mr. Francis, discussion. Yeah, he, he would go to the administration to ensure that that was, but the six months, say he starts now, um, he, would, he would get the end of the season, and then he would need to go back to the administration sometime between, say, we approve this now, and, and I think they have a one month um, for people to, to oppose it, but, mm -hmm. all right, so that six months would take him to the springtime, basically. So before he reopens for the spring, he would need to come back, and then it would be one year, every year at the springtime before, the season opens, he would need to come back and, and make sure that there have been no uh, egregious violations. I did six months and then up to three years. I mean, we can make it longer if you guys want or make it a, a, on an annual basis, but I just figured if by six, the first time, you know, because the six months will get us to the end of this season and then he, every year. And then after that point, if he's still there um, and, and it, Hopefully he's you know followed the rules and he can f then move into the same direction as every other business in town. I'm not aware of the last two events. How long ago? Was that before he came here, or after he? After this started. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. I, that's why I agree with Mr. Francis, and Mr. Okay. Um, further discussion, Mr. Um, Liotti. Yeah, so um, one of the things he wanted was seven days for live entertainment. Uh, I, there, was some, there was some language in there about having live entertainment for seven days. And he uh, used the rationale that Cinco de Mayo might fall on a Monday. Mm -hmm. So I thought maybe we, our language could say that he has the right for live music on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, plus whatever holidays come. Special. Like, um, you know, St. Patrick's though. Day, Cinco mm -hmm. de Mayo, Memorial Day, 4th of July, Labor Day, whatever, you know, typical outdoor. Yeah, if, they, if they don't fall on a weekend, then he would have the right to have live entertainment on that day. Mm -hmm. And then for the remainder of the time, Monday through Thursday, there's no live music. Okay. Um, Mr. Manskin. Uh, might I recommend if that's going to be a, a condition that's being entertained that maybe the holiday be or the special event that doesn't fall on a Friday, Saturday or Sunday be approved by the planning and zoning administrator just so we're not selling, you know, live bands for Jelly Bean Day or you know, it's a <laughs> National Hot Dog Day or I, yeah. I don't know. I wonder if, if I, I mean, one of the things I, I included in there was that uh, on Monday through Thursday, all, all entertainment ends at 8 p.m. Um, I don't know if that gets gets everybody out of that window, with, and, and that's acceptable, or if you'd rather restrict it uh, to the week from the weekdays. I, I, you know, to me, it just seemed like a nice compromise. You know, I mean, if his rationale is that he wants to have the option of having live music on a you know, a recognized holiday that doesn't fall. But I, I mean, can't we just list it to these, whatever, five? I mean, these are usually the ones where people might go out to, mm -hmm. the to listen to live music. I think what we could compromise is maybe that. I mean, you have to bring this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I guess. Four days out of the week. Well, my recommendation is not for mm -hmm. Thursday. 
minus the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then whatever big kind of go to a bar type holidays that would come. Uh, yes. Yeah, j just clarify, clarify that, Mike, if you could. So you so, said Monday. Yeah, so I had, I had said that Sundays, uh, all entertainment would cease by 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. Monday through Thursday, all entertainment would cease by 8 p.m. And Friday and Saturday, 10 p.m. And, and if, you know, I, if we saw the, the need to decrease that Friday to Saturday to 9 p.m. or, you know, again, whatever you guys think, but it's just trying to lay down some guidelines to start with. I think it'd probably be best if he, I think yeah, going along with Mr. Habansky's uh, recommendation, it'd probably be best if he articulated to the P&Z administration any day that would not fall into the established pattern. Um, you know, like, you always get, like, like 4th of July is always a good one to go after because it doesn't consistently fall on a Monday, which is the aberration of normal holidays. Well, and, it could and be if, on you, Wednesday, wanted, if you, know. you wanted to say Friday, Saturday, and holidays even. But what's a holiday, you know? Mm. I mean, well, Cinco over de Mayo is not over a legal summer, holiday. Got, over you know? the sun, summer, you've got Memorial Day, mm -hmm. you've got July 4th, you've got Cinco de Mayo, and mm -hmm. I think that's it. Maybe Labor Day. And Labor yeah. Day, yeah. So, so Columbus Day, Veterans yeah. Day. Columbus I, Day. I, I don't know. I'm just. Well, I, I would just say if I if I was going to include holidays, that would would uh, would be I guess uh, going out and having a good time. Holidays. Yep. I'd say Memorial Day, July Fourth, mm -hmm. uh, Labor Day, and Cinco de Mayo are the four summer warm weather season right. holidays. Mm -hmm. So. And we you, could throw them a bone and throw St. Patrick's Day in there too. Yeah. That's a. Yeah. But that, and, and more often, we could, but more often than not, nobody's going to be outside. It's just March is cold. But, you know. Well, you know, uh, but you they used to have them in Stratford Center. You know, the McCoys used to throw a, quite, a, quite a party there. Sure. So that's why I brought that. And, and up. if you wanted to include those five days in the Friday and Saturday? Friday, Saturday, and these five holidays. Further discussion from members? I mean, I have a, a list of questions I want to make, but I'll let everybody else go first. I, I, yeah, I mean, I have a couple more. Um, I yep. know that, you know, I, I guess he's, I'm not sure, it, um, maybe this is a question for, with, with the um, the governor's, or is it M7, where, where that allows him, is that what he's using as justification to be able to serve alcohol across the street from, because I feel like, isn't that supposed to be for people to be like, outside the, like on the sidewalk as opposed to inside their restaurant am i am i quoting the wrong number but i, I think you're talking about 7 mm uh, but and i it's an excellent point and you know i was just mentioned to the chairman that i i think you need to make a decision on this application as if none of those executive orders were in place right because you know it's across the street it's owned by different parties so the accommodation that the governor is giving to, as you said, allow you to have something on the sidewalk or is totally different than you giving him permission to do something on this separate property um, in terms of giving a zoning approval. Right, so then I think that, you know, if, if he's gonna, if people are gonna drink, if they're gonna have alcohol, it has to be purchased on that parcel, whatever he's calling it, Seawall Park. Uh, you know, like they can't buy it in Little Pub and then walk across the street and crack it open and drink it you know, um, they can drink it there. And, and I'll, just, I'll, I'll just add that um, the only reason they're able to have a uh, service bar over there is that the town is interpreted with, a, and this is across the entire town, I mean, there are some restaurants that have no sidewalk, that have no parking lots, and there is language in there, it doesn't require these outdoor dining establishments to be on site or even on an abutting site. It says nearby sites. So there were places up at Paradise Green or places in downtown Stratford that are not on site, they're not abutting the site and they have outdoor dining allowed there. So we just afforded uh, this 
applicant the same that we gave everyone else, which was when it's signed off by the fire, police, health, planning and zoning, building, um, to allow them to be there. So and you're correct, if this was to get approved, this would override. Now there's a use on the site. The use that's approved, they are no longer being able, to, they're no longer gonna be able to uh, claim this as their outdoor dining area. And if they wanna serve alcohol, they have to come and get a liquor permit to actually serve now on this site. Either restaurant cafe, beer and wine, whatever it is they end up wanting the vibe to be down there in the type of alcohol service. So I think they were just moving one piece at a time here. They're trying to get the use approved and if they got the use approved, they have to come back and get a liquor, a permanent, not temporary, permanent liquor permit approved for the site. Okay. Hope that explains it. Yeah, no, that, that's fine. All right. But yeah, yeah, like my, my, my concern is, um, you know, what was described as buying the alcohol in, you know, Little Pub and then bringing, you know, bringing it across the street or bringing it. And then my last thing uh, would also be the idea of food being, you know, you come with your, your QR code and you get the menu and then the food is prepared at Little Pub and brought across Washington Parkway into that space. There's no crosswalk that goes across Washington Parkway. He said he had a, a propane tank and a grill. So whatever food he offers in that space should be food that's prepared in that space. Gotcha. I do remember the applicant, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, I do remember the applicant stating that he would be willing to have a crosswalk installed to, at, from the corner to across the street. I'm not sure if that satisfies any of the concerns from the commission, but um, I remember the applicant stating that. Or, or even from, from the entrance to Seawall Park, uh, per perpendicular to the street, over to uh, the sidewalk at um, the opening, yeah, there's the opening line. Like, so there's a, cross, there's a crosswalk that goes from the end of that parking strip mm. to Little Park, yeah. and then the opening to the seawall place is halfway up the block. You yeah, know, so well, that's not, but if you do the if you do the opening there, you know, or the, you do the crosswalk up there, yeah. that's how people are going to come in. And you know, and this is a secondary one, but this is also so they would have to. Or they'd have to, or they'd have to walk through. I, I, then I, I wouldn't say they would eliminate town parking spaces. And, and I don't, I don't know exactly where it aligns with the, with the parking. But I wouldn't recommend. Either that, right? You said one opening. He might just have to move it to like closer to the corner. Yeah, yeah. Or move, move, move the, move the opening over to the uh, existing crosswalk. Have the opening at that spot. So he can, you know, so he can uh, utilize the crosswalk. Like Mr. Vigliotti said, I think the crosswalk is closer to the turn, mm -hmm. you know, but it, it does connect to the sidewalk. So they would have to walk from the sidewalk down a little bit and over. But for public safety, I think that's that's, you know, much better option than trying to have people cut through parking spaces that are on on you know Washington Parkway there or whatever. And and I would also, I would almost recommend that it, it, it be placed in the spot that's, you know, approved maybe by the traffic traffic commission here, since, um, you know, they may be able to figure out where is going to be the safest location, even if it's inconvenient for mm -hmm. people carrying food across the street um, for takeout. It's going to be the safest place. My worry is about having it too close to the corner or around the turn is that I think, you know, I, I listen to the radio, I always hear most accidents are when, on a left-hand turn when someone's taking a left. Mm. Um, so, you know, I would say, I would leave it to the, I would recommend leaving it to the discretion of the traffic authority to determine where that crosswalk should go. Traffic authority or traffic traffic commission? The traffic commission, well, it's the traffic authority. Authority. Yeah. Or we could say that they can't do it. Or you could say they can't do it. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, um, so let, let me make sure I understand. So post executive order world, and I realize that, and I, I've seen the latest updates that on the outdoor dining, and, and I mean, I know that's becoming a big thing, but just pretending that they just expire tomorrow morning. 
is all of this still permitted under our regulations? No. No. That would go back to a vacant lot mm -hmm. period. So right, so he would, it. It, the executive orders aside, they are not, a restaurant is not allowed to serve food in a lot that is not part of their restaurant right now. Certainly not as of right. Okay. Not without some text amendments or special approvals. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good to know. Uh, and then I guess mm -hmm. if we're going to allow them to walk across, there's no sidewalk. Like I've been down at Seawall and I've seen people use his lot that want to go to Riley's, you know, and they come out of that lot and then there's, you know, they have to walk around the perimeter of that parcel to get around to Riley's and there's no, there's no sidewalk. You know, they, they, they kind of walk in sand or, or, you know, along the, the, the side of the street. And if you're gonna, I don't know, like if you're gonna be carrying trays of food or I don't imagine whatever it is they're gonna offer, it seems to me there should be some, you know, consideration of putting a walkable path, you know, that you're not walking on the curb or you're not walking in sand, you're, you should be able to walk on a, on a sidewalk. Absolutely, and you know, bear in mind that you know, per the um, the motion that we're discussing right now, uh, I don't recall if there was any limitation on the amount of time for food, but this could conceivably going to 10 p.m. I, or shortly there before. I, I would, I'm just making some notes. One yeah. of the things that I would include in would be, um, and and I shortened up the the, the Friday Saturday holidays to 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. But uh, that the place would have to cease operations, you know, serving food, serving alcohol, everybody out of the place, closing a uh, closing time, so to speak, one hour mm -hmm. after uh, the, the, the end of en entertainment. And I'll, I'll make that as an amendment. Right. But, uh, well, actually, but that's not where I was going with that. Actually. Oh, sorry. My, sorry. my point was that even with the 9 p.m., you know, like, let's just say right now, sunset is around, what, 7.30, mm. 8 o'clock now? So, I mean, under this scenario, people could be transporting food and drink in the dark across the street. Well, but it's pretty well lit up down there, I think. But. Still. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah. we have street lights and maybe, maybe he's, you want to require that he put a street light at the opening, mm -hmm. you know, that, again, traffic authority, but, um, you know, street light at the, at the opening, so it, it's, it's lit. Mm -hmm. Um, further discussion? Otherwise, I'll. I got a few questions. All right, um, Mr. Chabansky. I just have one item because it's related, and before we go off on any other topic, uh, <laughs> our zoning enforcement officer mentioned, just wanted to clarify this is not when we're talking about a six month, then three sequential one year approvals. These are, they're not seasonal. This isn't summer. So if they want to do, uh, like I think Dan mentioned, you know, Christmas caroling with the bonfi bonfires and some things like that, we're talking about the six months starting from, let's just say, I don't know, uh, September 15th, whatever. They are then given six months over the, through the fall, over the winter, towards next spring, and then they would come back. Their training wheels were, it's all year. Mm. We're not just talking six months doesn't start next spring. Six, six, the six month time frame would start on the date of our approval. Good. Um, and, and, you know, beyond the, uh, you know, the, the opposition period, whatever you call it. The, and so whenever that, whenever, whenever it, it's enacted, but that would get him through this season into probably pre uh, St. Patrick's Day and then prior to doing it, but it gives him time to shut it down or whatever it is. He's not. We don't want to, We don't want to have that time frame start like in July, you know, where he's where he's mid-season. You know, pr get it start. Make that approval time pre-season, so he either can tear it all down or do something different, but not like when he's in the middle of of all of it. So, thank you. Okay. So, my question here deals with how this fits into the waterfront business district WF correct that's the that is the classification that it falls under right now 
Um, just to go through this so that we're all clear, there has brought up by a few of the speakers that there's differentiations between marine uses and non-marine uses. So as I understand it here, marine uses are boat docks, slips, piers, wharves, launching ramps, marinas, recreational commercial fishing, shipyards, boat rental, yacht clubs, marine research labs, parks, open space, and public recreational facilities. I'll come back to that one. Marine, harbor, police, harbor master, and other marine enforcement, marine storage, access uses, incidental to water dependent use, including dispensing of fuels to boats and so on. Further allows restaurants, excluding drive-in facilities, retail and service establishments, uh, residential as long as it is uh, compatible and there's a, something in here about a, um, I guess it's part of mixed use or something, but then it says prohibited uses. Uses not specifically stated are prohibited. No use of land in this district or the provision of utilities or other facilities shall support the use of vessels as living quarters. Okay, that's not really pertinent. So my question is, does this use that is proposed and is by the definition stated in their document as a outdoor dining and entertainment facility um, fall into the um, classification of the waterfront district? Uh, and I think my answer is not completely. Uh, there's parts of it that it does. Obviously, if this, the fact that Marnix is there, or Marnix and now was there and now Little Pub is there, that's in my mind the restaurant use that has been there since probably before I was born. So now I guess my question then is, since this is not exclusively a restaurant, but yet food being served there under the auspices of, a re of an executive order, does this fall into any other, other categories that would, that would have it as part of the waterfront business district? And the only one that I think it comes close to is parks, open space, and public recreational facilities. So does it fall into any of those three? Not exactly in my mind. Um, park, in my mind, is something like Short Beach, like Roosevelt Forest, something with public access maintained by the town. Open space is unattended or uh, left areas with uh, preserved for the community, which again, this doesn't fall into. And a public recreational facility, in my mind, is something along the lines of like our golf course, where it's something that the recreation department oversees and so on. I mean, the public would have access to this. Um, maybe, may or may not be on a per fee basis. Um, but again, I have to sort of stretch to say that it falls cleanly under the permitted use of the waterfront harbor uh, waterfront business district and I think that was also some of the concerns that the waterfront harbor management um, committee made uh, in their uh, negative recommendation uh, towards that so just citing that into the record so I'm already having some problems and we can debate debate this trying to see if we legally fit into the legal definition of the district that it's actually sitting in, which we changed it to last year. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about the parking situation down there, and I understand that the amendment before us is that it's limited to uh, 92 people, um, and I will ask either <laughs> if someone can walk me through the parking calculation on this site because I have to say I was not able to completely understand if there is parking sufficient to accommodate a facility that would be holding up to 92 people. So, 96. Uh, 96, 96, thank you. Uh, if we had enough sufficient to do that right now. Um, and so we'll, we'll talk to that. And then my other legal question here is also, and I know nobody likes it, but unfortunately we just, I'm not in a position to say we enforce the rules that we like and we ignore the ones that we don't, but there is that pesky rule about outdoor music. And given our druthers, we probably should change that, but that was not part of this application, so I still have to rely upon that as still the standing um, law of the town. So, um, Mr. Bansky, if you can walk me through the parking situation, I would be much appreciative of that. Absolutely, uh, Mr. Chairman. So, um, <clears throat> When initially reviewing the, the parking calculation, there was there was no parking shown on their plan. Mm -hmm. And so 
one of my initial staff comments was, well, they needed to submit a revised plan so that we can get an understanding as to, I had it, we had an idea of the use. So um, the use was section 12.5.5. This is the parking calculation for auditoriums, churches, theaters, assembly halls, stadiums. So we kind of grouped this into, um, you know, the enter an entertainment use. So for those, those uses, they require one off-street parking space for every four seats or one parking space for every 200 square feet of structure. So if we were to say, and, and, and the last item, actually I should finish, the last part to that regulation is or whichever is greater, either the square footage requirement or by seat requirement. So if we went by the square footage, you know, of, of built structure, they have two or three containers, maybe with a footprint of 150 square feet each, um, a phone booth, you know, a couple built structures, maybe there would be a small, uh, and at the time there was no plan for the band shell, maybe a 200, 300 foot square foot band shell. I mean, that's getting us maybe 10 parking, 10 parking spaces. So we did the calculation based, I had him provide his total seat count, which was, uh, I don't remember exactly, maybe it's 25, uh, 24, I think it was 24 picnic tables with at four per people per table. That's an average, sometimes there's six, sometimes there's two. We discussed the average and it made sense to me of how he came to his average. And then, so it's one space, one parking space for every four seats. And with 24 tables, you require 24 parking spaces. I believe, um, I don't have the plan right here, but I, I, I know after the last meeting, uh, they had an excess of, I believe, five or six parking spaces. Mm -hmm. So there's not always a parking calculation for every individual use. So what we typically, what's typically done is we will find them the use that we feel is either most compatible, and if there's nothing close, then we say, look, you're going to have to propose a text amendment mm -hmm. for a parking calculation for your use. I felt that it fit within this entertainment kind of assembly gathering area. Uh, use so I felt comfortable using that. Um, obviously, I have to feel comfortable with the application before I bring it to the zoning commission. Um, however, it is your determination to interpret the zoning regulations to see whether or not you th you think it makes sense and if it's good for the town. So you know I, I leave that to your good judgment, and um, but that's how we arrived at the parking calculation. So to summarize. We're, how many do you think we have on site? How many are they required and how many do you think we have? <laughs> 24 required. 24 required. 24 required, and I'm pulling up the site plan. And he says 29, I guess. And then six auxiliary. Is it 29? That's, oh, here it is. Twenty-nine spaces. Yep, twenty-nine spaces. So an additional five parking spaces. Okay. Would the requirement be different if it was a restaurant? Yes, they would be. Uh, for a restaurant, uh, I believe it's one parking space for every 75 square feet of restaurant space, significantly more. You know, I think we had the Sonic that came through that was down on 225 Lordship Boulevard. I think it was a 2,500 square foot Sonic that required 43 parking spaces, which mm -hmm. is a lot. We ask a lot in terms of parking for and, restaurants. And he, and he did also say though that they, they do valet parking um, where they, so they're, I'm looking at the, the site plan. Yep. There are 29 line spaces. He said they do valet parking. Mm -hmm. where they fill in the spaces in between. They could probably park another, you know, 20 cars in that space if they did some type of valet parking. He, he said they do that. I don't know if he, he does or has, but he said they have the potential to do that, which would, you know, add to the. Which is fine for me as long as they meet the, bare, the minimum requirement. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's 29 plus the potential for more if, if what he says is correct. Um, I think those are my big 
see here. There's some anger. Further discussion from members? Mr. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. If everybody's done, I'd like to make some amendments. Certainly, sir. To my motion. Um, all right, so the first would be that alcohol is only allowed to be consumed that has been purchased at Seawall Park. Um, I'd like to switch, switch the language to say Fridays and Saturdays, Fridays, Saturdays, St. Patrick's Day, Cinco de Mayo, July 4th, Memorial Day, and Labor Day, um, and to, to reduce that time to 9 p.m. as well instead of the 10 p.m. Um, that closing time, and, and when I say closing time, I mean the same as in a bar, everybody has to be out. And, and, I, and I, that's the term I'll use, closing time, but everybody's gotta be out. You know, you, you, you don't gotta go home, but you can't stay here. So closing time would be one hour after the elapse of the entertainment time. Whether that be nine or 10. Uh, I would go with nine o'clock on the Fridays and Saturdays. I would go 8 p.m. on Mondays and Thursdays. And that was my original motion, was 8 p.m. on Mondays and Thursdays, and Sundays at 6 p.m. So everybody would have to be out of the place. One hour. You know, one hour, 7 p.m. on Sundays, uh, 9 p.m. Mondays through Thursdays, and 10 p.m. On, on Fridays, Saturdays, and the holidays. Um, that the traffic authority approve uh, the opening location and um, and if required, lighting at the entrance. Uh, opening location meaning? The, the entrance to Seawall Park. The pedestri pedestrian entrance or, or the, the motor, motor vehicle entrance? The pedestrian entrance. And whether they determine it's best to have it at the, at the existing crosswalk or to move it and add another crosswalk, that would be their authority to make that decision and that would be binding to this approval. So those, that would be my amendment. Does that also include them no, she doesn't, she doesn't with the purpose of them bringing food from the restaurant across the street? Um, if, well, this is my amendment, and if you'd like to add that, you know. The, the, I'm just making it so yeah. you're not. I, I, you mean the, the traffic authority? And, and no, in terms of like, you know, making sure the crosswalk goes across Washington Parkway, because uh, I mean, one of the things that he had suggested was he'd be able to serve food from the restaurant. You know, um, you order it, you go to the Washington, what is it, Seawall uh, Park, and then you order food and they bring it from the restaurant across. The I, I, I think he said that it was all going to be done on site. I, I what, the food? Was, yeah. Let's take a look and see what he actually says here. I was just looking at that section. We and, and, it. And, and if QR codes and, and, and bringing it, but, the, but it, so I had said alcohol only allowed to be consumed that has been purchased at Seawall Park. If you guys preferred, I could say alcohol and food allowed to be consumed that has only been purchased at Seawall Park. So he says food service would be a continuation of the little pub dining in a to-go method with on-site beverage service and ice cream snack bar offerings. Hot food orders will be taken by servers or sent directly to little pub kitchen by guests via use of a QR code and guests will be able to enjoy meals delivered to their tables in a to-go fashion. Food will be prepared in little pub kitchen. On occasion, Little Pub will provide on-site food preparation in the form of barbecue cookouts, lobster shack type seafood and clam bakes and or foods with the appropriate permits and approvals. I, and, and so, well, but in my mind, I think it would, to, to create less of an impact on the neighbors, having the food cooked at Little Pub and brought over would eliminate the smoke, the smell, mm -hmm. A lot of those issues. I mean, having a small little hot dog stand or whatever it might be, an ice cream shack, I don't think. But if he's got a full grill going over there, mm -hmm. service the place. And, and I don't think we should approve a drinking establishment that doesn't have access to food. So um, I would think with the traffic authority, you're creating a way to get a safe way to get from Little Pub side of the street to Seawall side of the street would be a good thing. And to allow them to bring food across I think would be a good thing um, because it, it, it doesn't have uh, as big, a, it doesn't detract from the neighborhood as much, doesn't create as much of a nuisance for the neighbors. So 
Um, but the alcohol can be served on site and shouldn't be brought over by, by patrons. So I, I only included alcohol in mine, and, and you know, if you guys determine that that's what you wanted, but I think it would be um, detrimental to our, um, the direction we're trying to go into if we mandated he couldn't bring food over. Okay, so let's do these one by one. Um, we could do multiple amendments. Um, I have no problem with that. So Mike, your amendment. Why don't you let me? So I, I, had, or, I had five, I think five amendments. One, four. A, a three foot split rail fence. That, no, that's the original. Right, you yeah. want those on there too? Yeah, those are part of the, the original. Okay, yeah. with a two foot shrub in front of the fence. Um, no stand up service. One opening there. Uh, 90, no more than 96 people. Uh, Monday through Thursday, 8 p.m. Sunday, 6 p.m. Friday, Saturday, and I know five holidays, but I'm not going to list them mm -hmm. till 9 p.m. Um, and here to sound ordinance, six months approval with three one year uh, additional approvals. Um, the structure demands shall not to exceed. 12 feet in high and direct sound to Long Island. And then over here we have um, closing time one hour after entertainment, traffic authority approval um, for the pedestrian location if, we, if required lighting at location. Do I have everything? Um, alcohol only allowed to be consumed that has been purchased at Seawall Park. Okay. And with, with the town's uh, noise ordinance, I, I had no amplified music and the music must, have, and, and the entertainment must adhere to the town's sound ordinances. Okay, what did you just say? Um, the, no amplified music. No, all right, and, that's what the sound and the, ordinance. And it must adhere, any, any entertainment must adhere to the town's sound ordinance. And then I had the alcohol only allowed to be consumed that I has been purchased at Seawall yep. Park. Okay. 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 So let's vote on just, um, is there a second to your motion, sir? Yeah. Um, yeah. Mr. Francis? Okay. Just on the items that Mr. Henrik has, uh, has asked for his, uh, uh, in his amendment, and then we'll obviously enter more. Any further discussion on those items? I just have, Mr. Vigliotti? With this, I, I gave him a seven day window with time limitations to those. Uh, so Monday and Thursday would be 8 p.m. Uh, Sunday would be 6 p.m. And I can't see, I'm not saying he won't, but I can't see somebody having entertainment seven days a week, but, and then, and then the weekends and the holidays with the 9 p.m. end time. Could you repeat? Mr. Bansky. Uh, Mr. Henry, could you? Repeat the, the part about the holidays and the specific holidays, if those are still applying to Okay, us. so it would be Friday, Saturday, and holidays with the 9 p.m. Uh, end, of enter, end of entertainment time, and those holidays would be St. Patrick's Day, Cinco de Mayo, July 4th, Memorial Day, and Labor Day. Thank you. And, and if you guys, I mean, again, it, it's up to you, but if you wanted to cut a few days off the the weekday, Monday through Thursday, or you know, just do Thursday 8 p.m. and the weekends and Sunday, you know, whatever. Just, but. yeah, I would propose just cutting those those days, giving giving the giving the residents a break from, even giving them the opportunity mm -hmm. to have those days, because he, I mean, he could very well just have music all those days. Mm -hmm. So if we just cut that opportunity, so we know there's a break. Would you in mu in, in music and entertainment from Monday until. When, you know, Wednesday night and Thursday you can. Would, would you be okay with eliminating Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday and leaving Thursday? Yes. Okay. All right, so that, that I'm gonna include as, as another amendment that uh, the time frame would, would be Thursdays 8 p.m., Sundays 6 p.m., and then the Friday, Saturday, and holidays. 9 p.m. Yeah. 
Thursdays, 8 p.m., Friday, Saturday, 9 p.m., Sunday, 6 p.m. Yes. Thank you. So uh, there, there would be then five, five amendments that we would be voting on. Okay, are we clear on what those five are? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I, I can read them again if you guys want. You and I believe I have them all, but I also have the ability to review the tape and listen to them to make sure I'm getting them word for word. Yeah. So just it, so it would be traffic authority approval for the opening, closing time one hour after the elapse, alcohol that can only be consumed that's been purchased there, uh, switching the Friday, Saturday, and holiday, adding the holidays and reducing it to 9 p.m and then there would be no Monday through Wednesday entertainment. Would you like that to be stated as a condition? There is no music to be played Monday through Wednesday. Yes, that's part of my amendment, yes. No live music or entertainment? No, sure. yes, correct. Okay, further discussion on those amendments? Okay, all in, should we, let's do, let's do roll calls on these. Uh, Mr. Vigliotti? Aye. Mr. Francis? Aye. Ms. Manos? Aye. Mr. Henrik? Aye. The chair votes no, carries 4-1. Further uh, discussion on the amendments? Or any further amendments? So just one question before we move to the forward, to the um, uh, final votes. Should, when the um, executive orders expire, how does this, what happens? Well, it depends on what happens with this. So there are two scenarios. If this project get application gets denied and the executive orders for outdoor dining expire, that becomes a vacant lot with the last known use being a, a restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, if this application gets approved and the, ex if this application gets approved, the executive order for outdoor dining no longer applies to this site because now there is a permanent use that applies to this site. There are, it is an outdoor dining establishment now. Mm -hmm. So the site is now used for outdoor dining. Um, so essentially the, uh, the liquor permit that is allowing them to have alcohol at this site is no longer valid. So the applicant will then, at, if this gets approved and the, the executive order expires. They're allowed to do live. They're allowed to do live music there and bring some food over, until they secure a liquor permit of whatever sort that they're looking for, whether that be full restaurant liquor or beer and wine or um, whatever type of permit that they end up as asking for to this commission. Okay. So I, I have Where, a quick question to that point. Mm -hmm. So with the governor's executive orders. And hypothetically, us passing this, would the more restrictive, um, would our would our our passing of this uh, trump a a governor's executive order, even if um, ours were more restrictive? Can you? One more time. So anyway, so hypothetically, we pass this. So we have two. We have we have our passage, and we have the the governor's executive order. If the governor's executive order allows him to have, say, hypothetically, live entertainment seven days a week, but we have a, a passed uh, legislation here that says he's got restrictions, can he say, nope, governor's restrictions say I can do this seven days a week, and and he could do that now with us even denying this because the governor's orders trumps, but, but would we be, in sense, putting a more restrictive regulation on this property and trumping the governor's executive order by passing this? 
Well, I'll, I'll give my opinion before I turn it over to the town attorney. Mm -hmm. uh, it's my understanding that state law trumps local ordinance. State statutes trump local ordinance. Uh, so, you know, if that were to happen, the state law would prevail. But I'll let the town attorney. Uh, so I think it's a really good question because what's allowing him now to use a piece of property across the street for his outdoor dining is that it was, it otherwise did not have a use. But if you give it an approval, then it will have an approval. So it's sort of, but it won't have a liquor permit until he goes and gets one. So it, it's a, it's an interesting question. I mean, I, I think that once the property, so let's just forget, forget about this particular use now. If you had two properties that were next to each other, both of which were improved and being used as restaurants, um, the guy next door can't come and do outdoor dining on your property. So, I mean, it, there is an, it's sort of an interplay here between Little Pub and, and Platypus, because he's not asking for permission for Little Pub to have a permit on this vacant lot. He's asking for Platypus to have the right to have a permit on this to do what he wants to do. Now, right now he's just sort of taking advantage of the executive orders, as everybody else is, to say where is it that I can, you know, expand outside to, for social distance and to make sure that, you know, because of the outdoor dining orders. So there's an interplay there that's, that, you know, I, I think that once it has an approval for something else, like let's say you put up a, let's say it came in for a permit that wasn't related to the kind of business that Little Pub is now doing, mm -hmm. then that permission for the guy across the street, because they're really separate entities, to use that vacant lot for outdoor dining would, would no longer be in place. I mean, I think that's the best way to look at it. So. I mean, I think what he's trying to do is get permission, you know, going forward, but when would it be effective? I mean, when would the new use be effective? And I think then he's, he's stuck with his new use, and if the new use doesn't allow him to have liquor because he doesn't yet have a permit for that property, um, I mean, I suppose, If the property were to remain vacant, you know, to remain that the that the new use was not yet executed, could he still then use it under the executive order as his outdoor dining? Um, I mean, I think Stratford has been quite generous with where they're allowing people to to use outdoor space, whether it's on the beach in front of the little pub, or I think you'd have to look to all the way out to the parking lots. Well, you'd ha you'd have to look to what. Stratford has said about what property that you can use for outdoor dining mm. while this, you know, while we're in this, this period. Um, so, I mean, some towns have been more restrictive and some have been more generous with, mm -hmm. with what you can, um, what you can do. But it's an excellent question. I mean. Mm. So, uh, go ahead, Mr. Payne. The one thing I'll add to that is, and I, I mentioned it earlier, but I may have not clearly have articulated it, is they're only allowed to do on the vacant lots under the executive order whatever was approved across the street. So if Little Pub was approved to do live music and um, I'm trying to think back, something else, uh, and has a liquor permit, a full restaurant liquor, that use is now transferred is allowed to be done at this outdoor dining site. You cannot seek new approvals during the executive order. If you didn't have it before, you can't get it now. You, you couldn't ask for it now. So um, it's just going back to, you know, if this use was approved, it essentially is now the use of record. It's its own separate business. You, as Attorney Sullivan mentioned, if there were two restaurants, you wouldn't be allowed to go use your restaurant on the neighbors. And, um, I guess the only way that they would be able to, let's say they went for a liquor permit and got denied. They got denied for a liquor permit here as the subsequent step. Then 
they could potentially, I think, you know, give us written confirmation of an abandonment of the use to say, look, well, we know you guys approve this. We are acknowledging the abandonment of this use and do not want this outdoor entertainment use because we would rather use the outdoor dining for the next year and a half because it's there. Because it's good for till 2022, I believe, mm. now. So. So let me just make sure I understand this. So Little Pub and Platypus are two distinct business entities. Is that correct, or are they the same? My understanding is that this application, mm -hmm. understanding is, that this application is Platypus. It's not Little Pub. They just happen to have the same person, the same body that's, that's representing them both. So if you think about it, Little Pub is a, is a separate entity mm -hmm. from who's asking to develop this, this property. And so this idea that like, well, you can carry food across the street as if it were connected. It's one thing to say, well, you can buy food across the street and bring it and eat it at our picnic tables. You know, because we have this arrangement mm -hmm. with our neighboring, prop, our neighboring business. But, you know, I, I think you have to be careful not to mix them too much because the application didn't come in with Little, Little Pub and Platypus asking for this, like, together. They're, they're separate entities. So he gets the privilege under the executive order of extending it because he is a principal of both Little Pub and Platypus. Is that correct? Well... Do, do we know, though, that, do we know that Platypus, Little Pub is the name of the restaurant. Do we know who the liquor permittee or the owner is? Is Platypus perhaps the owner of Little Pub and the permittee of I, Little Pub? I don't know, and I didn't see any of that in the record. I mean, I, I listened to the tape. Mm. I didn't hear any of that. You know, it was a little sort of loosey-goosey as to the relationship between the two, mm. the, um, the two parties. And, and I and I don't know the answer to that. I don't know who is the corp that owns Little Pub. Is it Little Pub Inc? Is it some other entity? I, I, I don't know. You know, maybe maybe the way to get around the the things maybe being too close is you can do takeout from you can bring takeout from Little Pub. You set up your own rules who can bring food to Seawall Park. If you want to, you can bring Domino's there. You, you know, feel free. But if it's only Little Pub, then feel fr then feel free. But Maybe, maybe the Zoning Commission doesn't allow for the walking of food by Little Pub staff across the street. But I'm not even going down there. When I'm going okay. down the road I'm going down is, is we are making the assumption that he is entitled to this usage because it is presupposed that they are one and the same. And what I'm saying is that if they are not one and the same or if, let's say, the gentleman sheds his interest in Little Pub, during the time of the executive order, is this now severed? His ability or his legal right to use it, is that severed? Which, which happens to be across the street. My understanding is this application was filed by Platypus mm -hmm. for use of the property that happens to be across the street from Little Pub. And I didn't see any application from, from Little Pub, and I don't know what the corporate ownership interest, you know. Platypus how Partners is the owner of 60 Beach Drive, 9 Washington Parkway. Uh, 24 Washington Parkway, uh, 40 Beach Drive. So they own 40 Beach Drive, they own 24 Washington Parkway, they own 60 Beach Drive, and they own 9 Washington Parkway. Is what? Or is it the hotel? Because the Little Pub's listing is 10 Washington, well, actually, I'm sorry, I'm, not, I'm sorry. That's 10 Washington Court. Let me see what 10, what little. Pub it it seems to have encircled in, in this GIS map from the town, Marnix in the parking lot. 10 Washington Parkway, Stratford, Connecticut. Yeah. But if you look at the GIS map that comes mm -hmm. up on the town, it, it's got that 
it's two separate lots. Oh, let me see. Let me pick quick on it. Yeah, it says nine. It, it's, it calls it out as it says number ten, but it mm -hmm. calls it out as nine Washington Parkway, and the owner is Platypus Partners LLC. Okay. So it would be, it, I guess, to that point, it would be owned by the same entity that owns uh, Little Pub in the hotel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, just so um, I think I may have misunderstood some things also mm -hmm. that has been brought up. Um, so basically, if we approve this and say he sells it to some other entity, mm -hmm. we've already approved this in executive order. It does not expire under, exec under the executive order. It will be that type of use of land here and after. Is that correct? That's correct. That kind of worries me because I was under the impression, all right, the executive order is until 2022, and that would dictate what we're approving. I don't know if I'm ready to approve that lot for that particular entertainment forever on in, in Stratford. I don't think I'm ready to do that. Considering all the, uh, just as a legal question, considering all the question marks regarding the executive orders, do we have the ability to make, to um, link this to the uh, executive order? Like the approval is good until such time as 7MM expires or is not renewed or? I don't think that you're allowed to do that because you're not allowed to, to base approvals on the executive orders. Thank you. I don't, I don't think he ever came in asking us to, um, and, and I think he was pretty clear that there is an executive order that allows him to do that, and he wants to do this. And, and I think uh, what we're passing is more restrictive than the executive orders. And, and, and so he can go on for two years, you know, and, and do whatever he wants over there and just call executive order. And, but if we pass a more restrictive regulation now, it limits his ability to do what he can do there and it, and so long as he behaves correctly, it, it'll continue to go on. But there are there are stop gaps there in case he decides to uh, go over the top and you know maybe bring in a bring in a, a, an amplified music beyond the time frames if he's habitually doing that. You know if the sound uh, violates our town sound ordinances, um, if he overpopulates the area. Um, if he allows people to walk back and forth with liquor. I mean, there, there's a bunch of stop gaps in here that would keep what he's doing restricted. And, and I know we've been talking about looking at our town's um, outdoor entertainment uh, regulations, and we'll have a hard time making any changes if we um, put restrictions. I mean, I think we've restricted him more than we might, or maybe this might be a guideline to what we'll do if we decide to change our town uh, outdoor entertainment regulations. But if we say no to this, then um, he'd probably have a case that says we're being subjective or uh, prejudiced by saying no to him and allowing other uh, outdoor entertainment, uh, outdoor entertainment uh, venues to, to um, continue or to, or to Legally, anyway, just but legally, he really can't because it's, it's an executive order that's overruling anything local anyway. So, but having beer and wine, if this, this executive order was not in place, he would not be able to do that there unless we pass this regulation, right? Exactly, yeah. But we he would still have to get a, a liquor permit, yeah. And he's still got to get, he wouldn't be able to do that. What he's doing now, he would not be able to do that unless he got a liquor permit for that area. A liquor permit and approval from us. And, and approval from us, yeah. correct. Yeah, and, and so, part of the process is if we do approve this this evening, he'll, once, once the executive order expires, he'll have to get a liquor permit or he will have to get a liquor permit because there's an approval in place which would override, and I, I don't know if we got to, <laughs> I understand your answer, but if we approve this, and, and he go, if, he, if, he, if we approve this and he goes for a liquor permit and he gets denied that liquor permit, then he falls back on the executive order, 
says, I don't want this approval, and, and rides that executive order out, and maybe comes up with another plan. But if we approve this, then he now needs to go get a liquor permit in order to continue uh, operations there. Right, but so, like the chairman said, if this executive order was not in place, it wouldn't be on our coding guidelines for us to approve this. It wouldn't be what? Because of the, 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 the waterline front designation. So basically, the only reason we are here approving it because we have kind of a, a leeway because of the executive order. You understand what I'm saying? So I don't want to approve this and make it permanent under the leeway of this executive order. When in reality, if this executive order was not in place, most likely we would not approve this. If you understand what I'm saying. He would have to, it would have been a lot more complicated for him to get this approved. So if the exec executive order, which is in place from the governor and the state, overruns, overrides our local decisions anyway, why are we such in a rush to approve this when he can do this now as it is? Right? He well, can actually have well, this outdoor entertainment now under the executive order without our approval, correct? Well, part of, it's to create no. some part of it's to create some restrictions, part of it because I think he said that, you know, he doesn't want to rely on that, the continuous business practice. He wants to build it now. But I guess I would ask the town attorney, is there anything in our waterfront, in your opinion, in our waterfront district, whatever we call it, that would allow what he's proposing to exist? So the commission gets to decide what the regulations mean. So you have to look at the list of things that are approved in that district and then decide do they include the 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 uses that he's that he's um, that he's proposing. But but I do think that if he if you give him this approval, I think you have to look at the approval as if nothing was there. Under your regulations, what would you permit on that lot? Don't, don't look at it like, is there an executive order in place? Would he be able to do this? Would he not be able to do that? Look at the regulations, look at the use he's proposing, look at the zone he's in, and then make a determination whether the regulations permit him to do that. And if they do, then it gets approved. And if they don't, and then, as you said, he has to go get a liquor permit, which, I mean, we don't decide that, you know, that that's, the state's gonna decide whether he gets a liquor permit separate and apart from any liquor permit that may be across the street. Think of it in the way of, what if the little pub gets sold? What if they take that entity and that property and sell it to someone else? Is, is what you're approving on, on this property okay? You know, would it get an approval? And, and so then, in, in your legal opinion, is there anything within the waterfront district that would allow us to approve what we're looking at this evening? Well, it sounds like right now you have a restriction on outdoor music. So if you do have an, if, if, you're, if you don't permit outdoor music, then on what basis are you granting him permission? Well, well, we, we've we've given exceptions to that, like like Joey sees. But what I, what I'm asking, we have the, what is it? The waterfront district. What do we? What is the exact wording for? Waterfront. The, we have a waterfront district. Is there anything within the the uh, uses? And and we we do. And that maybe he's got to go to BZA for a you know to for a variance on or whatever. But we, um, you know, is there anything within that waterfront? district legally that, your legal opinion, that would allow us to approve, to legally approve something in here that fits within the regulations? Well, I think the chairman read what was permitted in that zone and the, and the, the you know, the closest was, is it a sort of a, sort of a restaurant? I mean, that, that was the only one that I heard that, I mean, I, I didn't parse that regulation, but that's the regulation that you should be interpreting as to whether the uses that are permitted in that zone include the use that he's proposing. Can and all those descriptions were not existent except one that was clearly still minute. <laughs> can, can you, Mr. Chairman, read those? I'd be happy to. Okay, so 
The following are uses are permitted. Marine uses in the waterfront district, uh, the following are considered marine uses. Boats, docks, slips, piers, and wharves, launching ramps, marinas, water-based recreational docks and port facilities. Recreational and commercial fishing and boating facilities, shipyards, boat building and marine repair facilities, boat rental, excursion boats and related facilities, yacht clubs including uses accessory to them such as swimming pools and tennis courts, marine research labs and related facilities, parks, open space and public recreational facilities, marine police, harbor master and other marine enforcement and service agencies, vertical maritime storage buildings in conjunction with a travel lift facility and general boat storage, accessory uses customarily incidental to water dependent uses including the dispensing of fuels and lubricants to boats, marine related broker sales and display, marine related office retail services, restaurants excluding dine-in facilities, retail and service establishments, and then there's a breakdown on residential which is uh, not really relevant here, Prohibited uses, uses not specifically stated are prohibited. No use of land in this district or the provision of utilities or other facilities shall support the use of vessels as living quarters. But it did say, it said retail service restaurants. It says, let's, let's follow the law, it says, um, I just lost it, rats. Uh, restaurants excluding drive-in facilities and retail and service establishments. Excluding drive-in facilities. Excluding drive-ins. But it says, it says restaurants. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I, I but it's not if, technically a restaurant. It, well, if, you, if you're not going to call this a restaurant, then what would you call it? It doesn't describe any of those that, that, and that's what one of my concerns were because I remember when the chairman had described them and none of that kind of fit so then I was falling back basically on the executive order mm -hmm. which wouldn't even once we approve it it's approved and that executive order does basically after that's over it's approved for that when I was kind of leaning back on this executive order and that's what my, my concerns are and, and, and well, uh, if, if you're not going to call this a restaurant or an extension of a restaurant, I'm, I'm not sure what you would call it. Um, you know, it, it's, it's owned by the same entity if we want to make part of this approval to be that it, that it stays uh, in conjunction with the title of uh, of a little pub, Marnix, the Marnix building, whatever it is, that this approval um, is only valid uh, as part of the title with, and, and I, I guess that's the legal way to, to do it, but it, it's, it's not an easement for anybody else to go over and use it. it it's, 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 a, it's a continuation of the use at Marnix, and if Marnix, and Marnix little pub decides to sell it, they, they aren't able to sell that separately and have an approval. It has to be, it has to be an extension of the restaurant that currently exists. It cannot be a separate entity. I mean, your other option here is, you know, and I know I'm sure the applicant would not be overly joyed to do this, is come back with a, to amend the zone to allow this. I mean, you know, if you're gonna, We've gone through that that definition a couple times here, and you know if it's and there's that disclaimer at the end that says, you know, uses not specifically mentioned are prohibited. If you say restaurants, outdoor dining facilities, and entertainment venues, you know, and let's face it, we're at the end of the season here. You know, it's basically August here, and you know, one of my complaints about this proposal sort of is that it seemed, let's just to say, it haphazardly assembled. And if you're going to go and do these things, you know, I know I'm a little bit of a hard uh, nose about procedure, but to propose something where there's two zoning regulations that say you cannot do it and expect us to just override it um, is very optimistic. Um, and I think it could be done in a different way. I, I think, I mean, overall, I think this would probably work, be a good thing for the town. And, you know, there's a lot of d discussion in here about how 
you know, we want to make sure that Stratford, people have places to go in Stratford. It's a wonderful thing that people go out to eat in Stratford and people go and entertain it. But when you make shortcuts, now you're causing problems and you're setting precedents and that gets us into trouble down the road. Just my thoughts. So again, I would ask, if this is not a restaurant, what is it? And if it is a restaurant, then, and, and we made it as a part and parcel with, with, this, with the building, the structure called Little Pub, mm -hmm. um, and our approvals were uh, to, to coincide, be part of the deed, to be only as a part of the entire entity that mm -hmm. we call Little Pub, then, then how could you not call it a restaurant? And I mean, an outdoor dining facility is a restaurant. It's just an outdoor. It's an outdoor dining and entertainment facility. So it's, you know. It's, 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 if you're serving food, if you're serving food, it's a restaurant. If you're serving food and alcohol, it's a restaurant. So I don't know what else well, you would food, call it. Food truck's not a restaurant. It could be called a restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> My other concern is I don't think that the Little Pub property is actually in front of you. The property, the addresses, the property addresses are, they're the vacant lot, right? So Little Pub, whoever owns it, hasn't come before you and asked you to connect them to the property across the street, I mean, obligate them. So, um, you know, the, if the application included Little Pub, maybe you could include it, but it, as it's currently postured, I mean, you just looked up the GIS, I think, right? Yeah, it, it's all by the same owner. But the address of the property that Little Pub is on, is that part of the application? I don't think no. so. The, it is 40 to 60 Beach Drive and 24 Washington Park. What's 24 Washington Parkway? Is that? Okay. They're they're describing this. They're associated. So we're not. It's, this is not even le legitimately official that they're partnering with these people. We're assuming that. Correct. Well, it says right here in the fourth chapter or fourth paragraph. This is a standalone outdoor dining and entertainment use venue. That they're, they're describing it themselves as a standalone outdoor dining and entertainment use menu. That just means it's not connected. It's an with right. The no. Well, there's no way to connect it to it, though. You're not going to. Well, I mean, but you can, you could say this is connect, you know, I mean, that they're not physically connected, but it's, I, I, they, I, they, it's almost as if they want us to consider this separate from, yeah. from Little Pup. So therefore, it would be a restaurant because they had no association with Little Pub in the first place. This is a standalone outdoor entertainment approval that they want. Not that they're associating with a restaurant. They're going to utilize their services, but they're, they're not together on this approval. So we, have, we should take it that way, as this is a standalone approval process for platypus to get this approval for that entertainment outdoor for the longevity not just for the executive order they want to do something more than that after the executive order in which we would not approve otherwise Stuff, huh? Well, Mr. Chairman, I think you raise a good point um, in the sense that, you know, because, I mean, this has been sort of local news since May. Mm -hmm. So people have approached me about it. You know, they keep saying they see my name mentioned in, I don't know, the Connecticut Post or whatever. And they ask about it. And what I keep saying is, there, the applicant is kind of asking us to approve something that doesn't exist at this mm -hmm. point in town. And, um, you know, if there are 
text amendments or there are special cases that should be considered to make what they're proposing you know subject to our approval or would fit better into what we what regulations already exist as a democrat i love regulation you know? so, <laughs> i mean you know I, and and you know i'm all for following the rules mm -hmm. you know i mean i i i came up with what i thought would be you know, fair to everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah and, and to your point, I, I, I think that what this guy's attempting to do would be, it's better than having a vacant lot there. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if there's opportunity for people to go down there and enjoy that, I think that's a good idea. But yeah, I, I also agree that, you know, my frustration is he keeps, you know, it appears he wants us to, to, to tell him what he wants. Mm -hmm. as opposed to saying, these are all the things I want, can I have approval for it? It's kind of like he's, he's making us define for him, you know, and I don't know. So I, the, the proposals that I suggested I thought would make it safe and, and, and maybe, maybe a, viable, a viable thing. But if there, are, if there are other regulations that should be adhered to, if there are other um, approvals he should have, then maybe that's what he needs to know. And I think, like you said, I mean, it's, it's the end of the season. Um, if our other option is to, for him to go that different avenue that you suggested, Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. and um, get those approved so it's make, it makes it easier on us to not just assume things. Because I, I mean, now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, I, I'm sitting here assuming a lot of things. Yeah. Um, and those were, were the reasons why I made those suggestions in my head and then when Mr. Hendrick had suggested them out loud, I was like, oh, well, I was kind of thinking, putting you know, a lot of restrictions on it and giving him the opportunity to abide by them and you know, give good credibility to the residents as well as the zoning commission. But as more information came up and I started realizing, you know, and, I, and like you said, I, we always talk about there's, there should be way more places for Stratford to go. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go to Milford all the time. I don't want to go to, you know, West Haven. I, I want to stay local, get something to eat or have fun, you know, and some entertainment. I, and I love that. Mm -hmm. I mean, my wife go out all the time. So I would definitely love to stay local and just go home really quick. Um, but there are a lot of complication in gray areas here. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to approve this with those complications and gray areas still impacting uh, what we're going to decide on. Um, I'd rather be clear on, on us moving forward. Okay, excellent points. Can I just put my two cents? <laughs> <laughs> You know, again, so, that's what people say. I Friday and Saturday night. And I'll, 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 Mr. Vigliotti, Mr. Francis, since we know that you two are continuing beyond uh, uh, January, I don't know if we're gonna have time to look at it, but I think we really need to take a look at that. <laughs> right. But nonetheless, it's there. You know. But uh, if it's uh, so I think this is going to, I think it has to be addressed at some point, but we don't rule on what we want the law to be, we have rule on what it is, so that's, you know, be that as it may. I mean, there's other issues here, you know, I haven't even talked about some of the special case uh, situations here, you know, even like the, the noise, although I, I suspect the amendments, I would hope that those would be, would shield it, but, you know, right now, there's two prohibitions that I think we have to leap past in order to vote to approve it. And that's been my concern on this one right now. And I don't think we're ready to make those two jumps. So. Further discussion, amendments? They don't come easy, do they? No? Okay, roll call vote. As amended, Mr. Vigliotti. No. Mr. Francis. No. Ms. Manos. No. 
Mr. Henrick. I'm going to clarify my vote. Certainly, uh, sir. Um, so we asked why they don't come here. Maybe this is why. But um, if this is not a restaurant, what is? Our options are he takes, he takes the governor's executive orders, puts it on steroids, goes crazy down there. In two years, he sells it. And you guys have made it clear that you can put a restaurant there. Sells it to another restaurant. Um, and again, if this is not a restaurant, I'm not sure what is. If you want to say he has to tie it to his title, make it part of his part and parcel with whatever it is, it is under the same ownership. But, um, and I think if he goes to court and appeals it, he wins pretty easily. But I'm going to support the, uh, the will of this commission, and I'll vote no on it as well. The chair votes no. Motion fails. Zero in favor, four in opposition. Five, zero, correct, thank you, sorry, long debate, and zero in favor, five in opposition, and before we move on, let me just, uh, I know, um, commend commissioners and commend the public and commend everybody involved in this. This has been a tough application, um, and, um, you know, the old joke is the Senate calls themselves the world's greatest deliberative body, but there was a lot of good deliberation tonight, and I encourage the applicant to follow the process, and work to make this a reality, because I think it could be something very good for us. But right now, in its current structure, that's why I voted against it. Okay, do we have any further applications? No, we do not. Okay, absolutely. So, moving on to the approval of minutes. Make a motion to approve the minutes of July 28, 2021 meeting. Yeah. We have a couple of amendments on there. So, motion by Mr. Henrick. Is there a second? Second, second by Mr. Vigliotti. Uh, discussion. We have two corrections that the secretary has uh, just informed me of. Uh, just one is a correction of the name of Christine Doolin. It was. Yes, I took It was listed as Newland, but it's D as in Delta O O L A N. And the second correction is um, it should be 775 to. 775 to 975. Correct. Okay. It should be 775 to 975 Lordship Boulevard. It was listed incorrectly in the minutes. Um, will you accept that as a friendly amendment, uh, folks? Thank you. Yeah. Any further discussion on the uh, uh, um, minutes as amended? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Carries unanimously. Uh, camp, campsite review, 40 Beach Drive in Washington, obviously. Um, we still have to vote on it. Okay, can I have a motion to? So um, we had a, a letter here from John Goucher. I think it says a campsite review isn't required. The, I'm like, the material submitted to this office includes a campsite review, plan shown the proposed layout of the outdoor facilities landscape. The project describing how the subject parcel is not located on the war front. They're not subject to water dependent use criteria. I don't know if that includes a campsite review or. It does. And, and you know, I mean, anything that falls within the coastal boundary that is not exempt from our local regulations, there are some inconsistencies with what our local coastal site plan regulations require and the states. So we refer to them anyways, and he, and he felt that it didn't require their, the state's review. Okay. However, it still gets conduct, conducted locally. And then we need to vote on it still? Yeah. Correct. Right. Motion to approve campsite review? Motion to approve the campsite review. Uh, is there a second? Uh, second. Second by Ms. Manos. Um, discussion, I'm assuming that a, a vote to reject no a, a no vote would be appropriate in this situation okay since there mr. chairman since there is no approval for the the restaurant um, outdoor restaurant um, I see no need to approve this so I would be voting against it very good uh, any further discussion again a no vote would be the preferred or the uh, recommended way of addressing this so all in favor say aye you didn't listen to me. It was a motion. It would. It was a. <laughs> it was a motion to approve or didn't? It was a motion to approve, which is right. the correct. So to be consistent, it would be a, a no vote would be consistent with our previous actions. Okay, 
So all in favor, I should hear silence. All in favor, say aye. All opposed, no. 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 Okay, uh, is rejected uh, five zero. Okay, 214 Benton Street, Mr. Hibansky. Give me notes one second. Sorry. Okay, uh, so this is for an, uh, a coastal site plan review application to construct a 3,880 square foot addition for storage for an existing steel fabrication, steel fabrication business uh, located in a light industrial zone. Uh, the applicant had, prior to this uh, coastal site plan review, went to the architectural review board. Their comments um, were attached to my me memorandum. Um, the, the parcel lies quite a far distance, actually, away from the coastline. Uh, and the, the, property preside, or the property is on shorelands, which are upland areas and elevations in excess of the 100-year still water flood level and located within the coastal boundary. Um, uh, we did receive some comments from the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection, um, as well as from the um, let's see, Architectural Review Board. Just let me double check one more item. The, also from the Waterfront Harbor Management Commission. Um, the Waterfront Harbor Management Commission determined that there were no significant impacts on the harbor management area. And um, we do have some comments that were received from DEEP and also from the engineering department and as I mentioned the architectural review board. Uh, it's my recommendation that the proposed application be approved subject to the following conditions. Mm -hmm. First, that the applicant must comply with all recommend recommendations made by DEEP. Uh, in their emails to staff, uh, that the applicant comply with all recommendations that have been made by the town engineer here in Stratford, as well as uh, rec all, all recommendations uh, given to the Zoning Commission by the Architectural Review Board. And what are those recommendations? The recommendations include uh, to provide a detailed planting plan when they, uh, when they apply for their building permit. Um, to in introduce some delineation of the uh, wall panels, uh, to enhance the sign to be more proportion, proportion, proportional uh, to the building, and to include some exterior an exterior lighting plan for the parking lot. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Chairman. I would make a motion to approve uh, the approval to comply with all deep requirements, all town engineer requirements, and all ARB requirements. Is there a second? Ms. Manos? Okay, motion by Mr. Henrick, second by Ms. Manos to approve with the uh, stipulations stated and to include the, uh, I didn't quite get all of those, um, all the DEP recommendations and town engineer, town town engineer, engineer and, and ARB. And ARB, okay. Any uh, further discussion on the uh, motion? Mr. Chairman, based on, yes, the, on the review of the previous boards and the recommendations made by the other departments, um, I think this would be a good application to approve. I concur. Seems like it's also okay. The Planning and Zoning Office has recommended the approval of the site plan review and it will remediate contamination of strapper and mitigate impacts to coastal resources. That's all good stuff. Further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Carries unanimously. Any zoning enforcement issues, complaints, problems? No. Uh, any accessory apartment applications or sediment and erosion? No. And now this one I know is going to take a little time to go through. Future text amendments. That was a quite an interesting document. And for those that um, I'm actually very pleased that Mr. Bansky has grabbed this because we had talked that the state legislature was very active in um, P and Z matters uh, this session. Some things made it through, some things didn't. Some things that I didn't even realize made it through, um, probably buried in the text of some bill, but there's a, was a 13 page summary of various items there that either we or our successors um, are gonna have to deal with. Some of them are time sensitive. 
So we wanted to talk a little bit about that, and that might guide what our agenda looks like for the remainder of the year. So Mr. Urbanski, I'll give you the floor to uh, take that. One thing you'll be happy to know is that it looks like for those of us that are coming off, I don't think we have to take care of commissioner training. So it looks like that's not going to start till January. So you oh, dodge that bullet. What's everyone doing <laughs> next week? <laughs> Go ahead, sir. So, um, yeah, the, I, I have got five items listed that are going to directly impact the town of Stratford here. Uh, the first item being, uh, well, I'll, I'll just explain, you know, why I have these on the agenda. First, they're all going to impact the town of Stratford zoning regulations. And two, I need some direction on some of these as to how you as zoning commissioners want staff to proceed with either preparing applications to opt out of some of these items um, or to, to do, have no action and to allow the state statutes, these state laws that have been uh, approved, allow them to basically override any unchanged regulation here in town. So uh, that's the gist of it. So, you know, one of the first major items that we have here is the uh, introduction of accessory dwelling units. Um, you know, this was a big talk. This was a large conversation at the state regarding, you know, how we could introduce more organic, uh, affordable housing in single family neighborhoods. Um, and, and, and Except part of it says they were not required to be affordable. They are not required, but that's why I said organically or affordable. They just happen to be more affordable than an apartment building. Maybe it's not a deed. It's not a deed restriction. It's not deed restricted, nor can it be. Um, you know, I would say that just given your, uh, given your town or municipality that you live in, some might be affordable in one town and not affordable in another. I would say just based on the, well, I'll just leave it at that. Either way, I'm not here to debate what the legislature has done. I'm just here to try to let you all know what, what direction you can give staff uh, and, and, and do as, as you will um, feel best for the town. So uh, we have the option to either uh, opt out of the provision by January 1st, 20, 2023. So that has a, a pretty quick time limit on it. We would, 2023, however, the law becomes active in October. So we could do nothing for two years. Like October next month, two months? Mm -hmm. Yep. So uh, we would need a two thirds vote uh, from the zoning commission uh, to opt out of this regulation um, and rely on our accessory residential apartments, which allows people to apply for an accessory dwelling unit within their home. However, it's quite different than what our regulation, uh, than what the state is allowing. You know, the state basically says they don't have to be a relative. Um, let's see. It's not restricted to homeowners or relatives. Um, it's not conditional. Uh, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to correct any non-conformities on a lot. Currently our regulation says if your lot doesn't conform or the structure doesn't conform, you can't have an accessory apartment. Uh, things about exterior doors, things we are, uh, conflict our local regulation, um, as well as square footage size. Ours has to be between four and 800 square feet. This one says that they, uh, they must be uh, at least a thousand square feet. Um, and those other requirements, which some other requirements, which do not apply. So, um, I mean, I guess the commission we're asking the commission to give staff guidance as to whether or not they feel that uh, they think the town of Stratford should opt out of complying with these accessory dwelling units or um, and, and rely on our existing regulation or allow what the state legislature has passed as uh, these are what these are the current uh, types of accessory dwelling units that the town would like to see. So let's let me make sure I understand yeah. our choices are. Mm -hmm. So if our choices are a do nothing and the legislature's law will override us. Correct. 
Option B would be for us to clean up our regulations so that it conforms with the state law. Option three is what, opt out and that gives us time or how does option three work? Opt to opt out essentially and say that these types of accessory dwelling units where it doesn't need to be a family or relative, mm -hmm. uh, doesn't need to have its own separate side door, um, do not apply. And we are going to say that our regulation is what we want to use. Why do we have the ability to do that? Because that's what the slate, uh, I, I don't So know. we could hold, so if we, so Okay, I didn't even realize that was an option. So we could actually say, no, we're going to hold on to our regulation and we're still good? Mm -hmm. huh, that's interesting. Op opt out. I mean, one of my biggest problems with this is, is um, they're not mandated to be affordable, so it, it takes away that, again, another affordable housing regulation that takes away the ability to achieve affordable housing stature. Um, you're allowed, they're no longer required to be attached. Mm -hmm. So, and, and it doesn't say, it, it says you can't uh, restrict the, the lot coverage, but somebody with a one acre house can put up one acre lot and probably put up two or three accessory apartments in the back corner so long as they're within the setbacks and, and lot coverage. Um, so it, it turns our, as a potential to turn our, um, some of our some of our neighborhoods in, into apartment complexes. There's no additional requirement for parking. I think it says uh, no additional parking spaces are required. So it just it kind of just says hey you know and and I know you know some towns do it, but I don't think Stratford's that kind of town that you know it, we go ahead wherever you want put up a put up mm -hmm. a structure turn your and I get a lot of complaints from people in the North End, you know about things that go on. You know they bought up and they bought in a more I won't say rural but more secluded area and, and some of the folks up there are you know over developing using it for commercial use whatever it might be so um, but it takes that away from from those neighborhoods and, and you know it, it uh, there's no way to regulate it you know so and then there's the whole the issue with the septic systems and and you know are we are we overloading our septic systems now or or uh, septics or sewers or I would be in favor of opting out of this. It's just, to me, it seems insane. I, I just wanted to add that, uh, um, you know, I'll, that's my interpretation of how these, uh, this, this legislation is to be enacted, and I would love, like to, you know, if the town attorney has any additional input, uh, to please uh, feel free to chime in. Uh, the only thing I'll say is that I believe in order to opt out, it's a two-thirds vote of the commission, and then it's also a two-thirds vote of your legislative, uh, you know, the council. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just. And, and many of these options that we're going to be discussing tonight, that that is the procedure. And does that have to be done by October 1st? Yes. That doesn't give us. Um, it doesn't give us any time. <laughs> so option two is to revise what we have, correct? Right. So we would have to revise what we have to satisfy all of those commissioners we would have by to October 1st. Or do we have an extended amount of time to revise what we have? You either do, no, do nothing and by 2023, or no, by October, these reg these this state law basically says these types of accessory dwelling units are allowed. You opt out, or you wait, feel it out for a few years, and you have until January 1st, 2023, to say, you know what, we dipped our toes in it, it didn't work, and uh, we are now opting out. Okay, you just confused me even more. I don't need to dip my toes into a stagnant pool to know it's not the place to put my feet. Yeah. It's, I mean, ordinarily, I think we would, it would have been great to have some sort of a written resolution say that we hereby opt out to transfer to the town council, but considering that the town council only meets once between now and October 1st, should we do a voice vote here 
and refer it over to the council? No, you can't. It needs to be it needs to be advertised and noticed. You need to have a public hearing, I think. Yep. You yeah, have a public hearing. So it'll be on our next agenda. So it'll be so okay. So we would have to put it on our agenda, mm -hmm. have the hearing on September the twenty second, and I should notify that the town council that they should expect to go into special session within a matter, or do they have to advert? No, they probably don't. They would have to uh, act on it within eight days. Wow. So the, it, it says the governing body must also vote to opt out, but it doesn't say that they need to require a public hearing. It only mm -hmm. says that uh, the zoning commission or joint planning com zoning commission must hold a public hearing, approve to opt out with a two thirds majority and publish the notice of decision and is there an appeal period to that, or is that just once it's voted, it's done? I think it's just a resolution. And then, and then it says the governing body must also vote to opt out with a two-thirds majority. But no, it doesn't say anything about a public forum for them. I mean, I, I don't know if there's, I don't think someone can appeal that. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, um, I'll tell you what, um, well, further discussion on that, I think a motion to direct, uh, do we need a motion to direct you to prepare uh, a document sufficiently and put it on our agenda for next month? I'll be happy to make that if there's no other discussion. You good? I'll second it. Okay, motion, I'll make a motion, motion by Ms. me, Mr. Sulhavi, Ms. Second, Mr. Henrik, to direct the planning zoning administrator to draw up and advertise a uh, opt-out resolution um, to be put on our calendar and then referred to the town council. Second by Mr. Henrik. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Carries unanimously. Item two, multifamily housing caps. Okay, this is going to be a big one. We've been talking about this probably for the past, well, at least since I've been here. Mm -hmm. uh, numerical caps on multifamily housing. A large section of this section five, it's actually section 5.3. We basically have put caps on multifamily housing uh, throughout town and uh, put a cap on the, the total number of bedrooms that are allowed uh, in order to develop multifamily housing. And um, essentially this cap will no longer be allowed. <laughs> um, so, you know, I propose, I mean, this is a huge change. Uh, I proposed uh, several alternatives maybe three, four years ago because uh, I started to realize that because there was no option for someone to build a multifamily house in Stratford, unless it was affordable because all of our, the cap had been reached. Um, and so uh, none of those made it to a formal application. Um, so, um, you know, I'd be happy to, to represent those to the Zoning Commission for consideration. Uh, I think that there's, I'd have to go back and, and, and reread fully, but there's one quite simple option which basically allows for multifamily housing to be allowed in certain single fam certain zones. Not only RM1, um, but also possibly an RS4 or proximity to the train station. There are certain ways that we can control it. So um, that is gonna be something that we're gonna need to be discussing or at least referring to, uh, I'll take your direction, but we could discuss it here or refer it to the Planning Commission for them to discuss and come back with recommendations to the Zoning Commission. And, and just a quick question though. It, it says that it, uh, and to allow a housing that meets the needs outlined in the state, the state plan of conservation and development consolidated plan for housing and community development. Is that? Which section are you? Uh, the multifamily housing, about the yep. fourth paragraph down under stronger, stronger obligation to zone okay. and able housing opportunities. Okay. Are you aware of what that is, the state plan of conservation and development? Is yes. It, is, is, is that something we use as a guideline? Yeah. It guides state initiatives such as, uh, you know, I think that's most likely where some of 8-30G was born from is the state plan of conservation and development that said we are now going to be prioritizing the need of affordable housing over character of your neighborhood. But yeah, so a lot of, a, a lot of large tran transportation projects 
they get written into the state comp plan of conservation and development. It helps with funding for certain projects. Um, but yes, you know, certain plan plans that we do need to be consistent with local plan of conservation and development, regional plan of conservation and development, and state. So what, if any, uh, so I'm not sure I see where we have any options. So all the numericals go away just by, they're just basically now inconsistent with state law on October 1st, I'm assuming. I don't remember the exact date with this one, but I, I, mm -hmm. I, I think it's, um, deadline of June 1 municipal oh, that's the housing plan which we've already done that thank you uh, I don't have the date I'm gonna have to double check the okay date. I, I think that one might be effective October 1st as well okay but I, I will check so then what um, obviously then we need to rewrite that reg to conform obviously but it would remove any numerical or percentage caps in there I'm not sure what else we can latch on to I'd have to look at the reg itself um, planning should probably be involved in this too um, because this is going to be the development of I mean it, it basically our reg will just fall into non-compliance assuming and be unenforceable until we replace it with something so that's actually we do have some exposure on that to have a a non-existent regulation for until such time as we adopt one. Um, so we're going to have to draft something relatively quickly. And I do have some alternate, some some potential options that I, I haven't looked at much mm -hmm. in the past few years since uh, they were proposed. But I can certainly bring the, uh, send those out to the commission mm -hmm. for review. Okay. Uh, and look, we may dig into the details even deeper on these things and find, well, maybe there's, maybe we don't necessarily have to do this. I, I've been a proponent of fixing this for quite a long time, so. Um, but, you know, I okay. wasn't elected by the residents of Stratford, so. Can you research and then get back to us even at our special, or no, well, our, our mid-month meeting um, on where you are? I don't think we're ready to have a, a document ready but right now, but let's at least keep the discussion going uh, we uh, unfortunately because it's a special meeting cannot discuss I any any that. items that aren't on the okay, agenda so the then agenda. let's let's be prepared to discuss at the regular okay yep uh, did, did I hear that you wanted this ref refer to the planning committee did it loop them in you can use their I want uh, the, the this is one of those things at least in my mind that the broader input <laughs> <laughs> I think is better. Uh, I don't know that I necessarily want to run up the hill by myself on this one. Um, we could do that if you like. Can I have a motion to, um, let's see, how do we want to say that? I'll make a motion that we direct the Planning and Zoning Administrator um, in consultation with the Town Planner, Town Planning Commission uh, to draw up a proposal and, and recommendations and recommendations to be submitted by the end of the month i'll second that okay end of August? yeah that's yeah, a good point end of september i'm already thinking it's september uh, i'm not necessarily the final document but at least get us something that we can start working with um you know i don't think we need a i don't think we're going to be able to do a reg that quickly but at least give us some options that so that we can debate them at our next meeting okay can we have a second I second it. So I second Mr. Henrik. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Carries unanimously. We'll obviously be in touch on this one. Okay. Next item, outdoor dining. <laughs> ah, we got to vote no to this one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there are going to be some restrictions here um, for outdoor dining um, or, or lifting of certain restrictions. Um, let's see. Uh, extends the... Uh, this extends the outdoor dining uh, to March 31st, 2022, uh, including the 10-day turnaround of, of applications, uh, documentation for applications, um, 
conditions for public sidewalks, all the, all the stuff that we're essentially doing are already. And that's, mm -hmm. Everyone's already able to take advantage of. Um, the, the thing that's gonna be affecting the town of Stratford is uh, that food establishments uh, are allowed to provide dining as of right, uh, outdoor dining as of right in any uh, food establishment unless it's a non-conforming use. So uh, a restaurant in the middle of a single family neighborhood and the use is not conforming. Outdoor dining is not permitted as of right. Currently, under section 7.7.2, outdoor dining requires approval from the zoning commission. So that is gonna need to go, go away, essentially. Really, okay. Um, okay, so because we've been doing this more as an administrative ap ap approval, haven't we? I have never, I haven't had, I think everyone must have already got their administrative approvals because I've never had someone come in for an outdoor dining permit. I've had people come in for um, an extension of a liquor permit to an existing outdoor dining uh, area. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then our appropriate action would be <laughs> the repeal of our <laughs> outdoor dining regulation? <laughs> Just the fact, well, a, a, a good portion of it. Yeah. Um, but is this is this one? It, it says March 31, 2021 through March 31, 22. Is is that mean that that is the life cycle of this legislation? Uh, good point. Uh, no, that's the life cycle, and I'll let uh, uh, Attorney Sullivan chime in if she'd like. Um, that's the life cycle of the executive extension of the executive order, and then beginning April 1st, 2022. Um, the below item, the, the below items such as outdoor dining being permitted as of right will take effect. <coughs> Attorney Sullivan? This is presuming that the executive order when it expires on May, on March 31st of 2022, then that's when the April 1st, 2022. So it's basically saying up until then, you're under 7 mm. After that, there's outdoor dining as a bright. So I think, in part, it's to give yourself a little time to figure out, you know, what. I mean, I could tell you, having been on this commission more, you know, years, when we first started it, everybody who wanted it had to come in for a yearly approval. Uh, and it was, I think it was April to October or something like that. And what happened is eventually we had a very warm October and November one year and people went further. They kept coming back and we would literally be sitting up in the conference room with a stack of approvals and eventually we made it more permanent and said any new ones I think had to come through. But basically every restaurant did. And I mean, it has not been a problem uh, generally. Um, and I mean, considering what we've been through here, um, you know, it's worked out pretty well. So I don't necessarily have a problem with repealing that regulation just to keep our books clean. Um, so just out of curiosity, based mm -hmm. on this legislation, Little Pub can continue to do outdoor dining mm -hmm. across the street because this allows them to do that. And it doesn't matter whether we approved what they wanted or not they already have an approval for on, wait, on this, wait, across, when you said across the street, meaning their original property or meaning at the well, they're out, they're, they're property out, in question? outdoor dining that's been, that's been yeah. established by 7MM now extends through this legislation. Well, temporarily. Well, there's there's no there's no there's no daylight to this legislation. It says beginning April 1, 2022. Well, that's outside dining. Uh, my I mean I'd have to dig into the details. But my guess is that does would not extend to outdoor dining to ex, um, outdoor dining across the street necessarily. Maybe maybe it would. I mean. The way we read the, the executive order is that it allowed folks to do it in other, other places that weren't on property. Um.
What page are you on, Mr. Vigil? Page five. Oh, okay. It's right. Um, mm. Okay. Okay, um, I got it. Thank you. And we'll have to determine whether or not that's a staff reviewed administrative review or, I mean, it doesn't say here, or that's commission. I mean, and maybe the commission, when it seeks to revise our outdoor dining regulations, says it's hmm. an administrative site plan review by staff to ensure that there's no public safety issues, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, this is interesting the way it says this here. Administrative site plan review to determine whether the proposed outdoor dining use conforms with zoning requirements not contemplated by the bill. For example, regulations unrelated to providing pedestrian pathways and parking. Huh. That's interesting. I hear that and I hear that's a staff review to make sure that, because that's what, essentially what the executive order tasks the departments reviewing these outdoor temporary outdoor dining is make sure that the people aren't getting run over by cars in parking lots mm -hmm. and that's essentially what we did or at least tried our best okay um so i think that's a reg that needs a maybe not a repeal but a con con clean up slash conformance check and i would recommend maybe a referral to the planning commission for further study on this I think that's a good idea. Uh, can we have a motion to direct the planning and zoning administrator um, to draw up a uh, re revision to our outdoor dining regulation and submit it to the planning commission for consideration and referral back? Mr. Vigliotti, second. second Mr. Francis, any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, carries unanimously. Recreational cannabis. Yeah, you thought the earlier the evening was tough. Ooh. <laughs> okay, so I, I'll be honest. I mean, there's so many things going on. This one's even. This one's off my radar. I mean, I don't 100% know what going to be the next path is. What, it's a little foggy, is what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> what what municipalities that I have talked to are doing? is enacting a 24-month uh, moratorium on any dispensing of uh, recreational marijuana. Um, I mean, I have, I was, uh, I was speaking with Mary Young, who's my uh, counterpart in um, uh, Westport, and their, their provision that they, their prohibition that was, is up for adoption, I believe, either this week or next week is uh, for a period of 24 months, commencing from effective date X, um, all cannabis establishments, with the exception of dispensary, with the ex exception of dispensary facilities, are prohibited in all zones, districts of the town of Westport. So, um, and their dispensary facilities are their medical dispensary facilities. So. It also says that the, 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 the electors can petition on a referendum as to whether to allow the sale. Yeah, and I haven't even gotten to the, the, the rest of this. I think most towns are treat if if they are looking to approve it, they would they would treat it like a liquor store because it's a regulated substance. The guidance really hasn't come out from the state yet. It's you know somewhat complicated. A lot of towns are taking you know the option and just putting a, you know a moratorium in place. Um, there is. You know there will be additional licenses out. There's also an opportunity under this under the statute to relocate existing medical marijuana facilities to make them hybrid facilities. So um, uh, 
you know, there, I think they'll be jockeying. Um, and these facilities, the, the, the retail uh, facilities are limited to one for every 25,000 people. You know, one, if you have less than that, you still get one. But um, so, you know, it's gonna be interesting how licenses will come out and then towns will either opt in or, or opt out. But Jay's right, the majority of towns have said, um, you know, we'll put a moratorium in for uh, a certain period of time on the recreational. And there is also a tax incentive. I mean, some of the tax money is gonna come back. I think it's the 3% is gonna come back to those, um, those towns that, that do have um, recreational. And there's also opportunities for what they're calling sort of an equity piece. So people who have been disadvantaged can partner with um, you know, existing uh, companies to, to um, you know, for that benefit. So it's up to you to make the determination, but um, as I said, there's no guidance really from the state yet, which a lot of people are waiting for also. So. And so if you turn to page seven on the handout, the very top, you know, gives what I see as the most succinct guidance, which is municipal zoning regulations may establish rules regulating the following uh, re regarding cannabis establishments. You can prohibit them from opening. You can restrict them in their hours and signage. And you can restrict their proximity, which I, I don't understand two and three because I feel like there's case law that says you can't restrict content to signage. And that, you can, and that distance rules are not legal. So I'm not sure how those. And we found that it, not even unlegal, they're unworkable because we had the, the whole but the experience that we've had with our former regulation for distances of liquor stores to schools was just an absolute mess. I'm being polite. And I believe you can take those proximities into consideration, but they cannot be the determinant factor of, of why one would get approved and, and not. But either way, I think one option is one, I mean, you can either prohibit them uh, through a moratorium and study it until you figure out what things end up looking like two years from now when actually potentially the first store could open up. Okay. So they're not allowed to open up yet for another two years? That's my understanding of it. Yes. Um, thoughts? See how it plays out. But if you want to see how they work, drive up to Massachusetts and they have dispensaries up there and, and see what they look like. You know? According to Mark Bowden, our, our former uh, gubernatorial candidate and now our state tax commissioner, mm -hmm. I think is. He was on the radio, but he was just talking about the, 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 the phenomenal amount of taxes that could be brought into a community with these. He's been up to Massachusetts, supposedly traveled around the country, places who have them, and has done a study on them. He's promoting it um, as a way for municipalities to significantly grow their, their tax base, but I mean, it all depends on people's view of it. So. But they do have them in Massachusetts, they're not far away if you wanted to see what they look like. So. They're medical. That's all medical? Not recreational. I mean, I've also heard a lot of good things about the taxes of the, <laughs> the, the towns and cities that have these dispensaries are substantial. Um, but I would need a template or something just to kind of see how they're working and in their, in their guidelines and their procedures before I... So if they can't even start, then I mean, there, I guess there's no harm in doing nothing, right? Or do you think the moratorium until such time as we can develop an actual regulation, do we have any exposure by not acting? Let me just ask from a legal perspective. 
Well, I think what's going to happen is those those towns that are accepting. I mean, the, you know, the companies will already be sort of jockeying for position. Mm -hmm. And since the medical, the way it's going to work is that the medical marijuana facilities are going to be able to move within a 10 mile radius of where they are now. So, and and be a hybrid facility to so have recreational and medical in the same the same location. And those licenses already exist. Mm -hmm. So there'll be, a, um, you know, as I said, there's no guidance yet, but what's gonna happen is um, there'll be people who want to get into this business and, but they don't have a license. Half of those licenses oh. are gonna to go to, to equity, you know, to, mm -hmm. to um, disadvantaged, um, and that's part of the whole part of the whole process. Um, so there's not going to be one in every town because there's just not. That's just the market wouldn't allow that, and the licenses are there's just not going to be enough licenses for that. So I do think that at some point, um, some towns are going to step up and say we're interested in this and we're interested in the tax money, and they will have either relocated medical facilities or, you know, once the new licenses come out. But right now it's sort of in a state of flux because there's no, there's no guidance from the state. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, as Jay said, many towns are saying, uh, you know, let's, let's wait and see how it, you know, how it, uh, how it plays out. But it's, up, it's totally up to, you know, I, I, I do think that going forward it's, it's going to be a, a retail business. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. not saying there aren't going to be issues, but. Um. Yeah. Okay, so what's your pleasure? Do we, <laughs> I'm not sure <laughs> what the best approach is on this one. <laughs> well, send them all to planning. Let them. Yeah. You know, actually, it's probably not a bad idea to start the process of uh, drafting some regulation. I don't know that we're going to have them done quickly, but you know, put it on their agenda and let them wor work on it. Isn't it great sending things down to the other chamber? You got to love that. Defer. Yep. Yeah, they've had a few very quick meetings lately. I was talking to one of the members, so. so come on. Anyway. Okay. Uh, par parking for housing units. Okay. All right. This one is relatively straightforward. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, so new legislation that's going to impact Stratford, and this is on page eight, and it's the one, two, three, it's the fourth item down, reduced parking requirements. Pub Public Act 2129 requires that zoning must not require parking in excess of one space per studio or one bedroom unit or two spaces for larger units unless municipality opts out of this requirement through a two-step process requiring action by both the Planning and Zoning Commission, uh, the, it would be us, the Zoning Commission, uh, and the Town Council. S same process for the eight accessory dwelling units. So how this impacts us uh, in Section 12.5.2, um, we require uh, two space, let's see, for residence apartments, two spaces for each dwelling unit containing two bedrooms or more, one and a half spaces for each unit containing an efficiency. So that section would need to be changed from one and a half spaces to one, and then plus a 10% addition for guest parking. I'm unsure of how exactly this reduced parking requirement, if a commission can ask for 10% more on top of the bare minimum of, you have 20, Sing 20 efficiency units, all you need to do is provide 20 parking spaces. Can, or can a zoning commission say, okay, you're a, we want 20 parking spaces for the 20 efficiencies and 10% for visitor parking? I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know the answer. Well, it says it uh, requires that zoning must not require parking in excess of one space. Well, and, and, and I, I'm, I'm le I'm led to believe that that's how it's going to that's how it's going to work but um, until I really we really dig in to see what exactly is allowed and get opinions from our 
the town attorney's office and um, my guess is it's just going to be a bare minimum you can't require more than one for an efficiency and, and is this is this legislation in effect now or is there a start date on it um, I believe that this is October as well because the ones that don't have the October date uh, on it, the ones that don't have the due dates are the ones that are basically you need to have done by October. The accessory dwelling units. Based, based on the fact that anytime we have a, a, an apartment or a complex, the biggest complaint we get is the parking. Mm -hmm. I'd almost be afraid to put this on the same date as the other one because the public forum might be overwhelming. Correct. I mean, I think we should opt out of it anyway, but the, the process is there. I mean, do we have the ability to opt out of this one? We do. We do. Same process as, as the other one. <coughs> so if, if we... No, just, just zoning. Zoning needs to have a public hearing, and then we vote, and then we send it to council. And then mm -hmm. both need to be two-third majority votes. But if we opt out, that means we get to hold on to our reg as is? Correct. You think that's going to cause a lot of controversy? Well, I, I'm just saying that, that typically we have a ton of people come out and sp not the fact that we want to opt out of it, but if we yeah. have a public forum, people are going to come and speak in favor of opting out, I think, yeah. because we have so much opposition to the parking. I mean, and ours is more restrictive than this, mm -hmm. and they complain ours isn't enough. So mm -hmm. saying we're going to be lowering the parking, we're, we're mandated to lower the parking regulations uh, requirements. Uh, what do you think, yes or no? Mm. I think we'll get overwhelmed by people coming out to say, opt out. But then if we don't act by October 1st, do we lose our ability to opt out? No, we have till the 23rd of whenever. We have until when? Two years. Basically two years, same as the other one. My guess is that it's two years, but I have to confirm. All right, let's do that. Um, confirm the, the time on this one. Um, and obviously, we'll keep in touch. If it turns out that we're gonna, that's our one and only shot to do it, we might just have to bite the bullet on that one. And we, uh, any of these items, if we find some, something that we realize the clock is truly ticking, we can always schedule mm -hmm. a, a remote special meeting to handle any of these opt-out items mm -hmm. if we needed to. Because... Um, the agendas coming up over the next few months are, I won't say scary, but they're, they're, they're going to be busy, mm. very busy with, with development applications. Great. And then they've, they've also started this wonderful zero, Vision Zero Council, eliminate all transportation-related fatalities and severe injuries, a commission to do that. I mean, nobody likes fatalities or injuries, but it's, it, it's an impossibility to eliminate all. The best way to do that is make everybody walk. Don't give them any ideas. But then, but then they trip on a sidewalk and they have a they have a mm -hmm. they have a severe injury. So walking's out too. Yeah, we 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 both sat on financing claims. So <laughs> crazy this stuff is. Beautiful. Should I proceed with if this has an October opt-out deadline, mm -hmm. same as the accessory dwelling unit, to prepare an opt-out, um, to begin preparing something for an agenda to opt out? Yes. Yeah. If you want a motion to that effect, I'll make I'd make a motion to uh, direct the zoning director to prepare, begin the process. Yeah. Draft a opt-out resolution. Okay. I'll second that. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Carries unanimously. Land use approval extension, expirations, save, 18 month. Save the easiest one for last. Well, you wrote the agenda, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> well, this one is gonna have a lot of imp implications throughout the entire state of Connecticut. I'm, I'm really, uh, this is the one I'm gonna need to sit down and, and really consult with the town attorney's office about um, what we need to do regarding the expiration of land use approvals like a special special case. 
uh, you know, this, this bill essentially says that approvals are valid for 19 years. 19 years? Yep, and we have, we, our regulations essentially say you've got 18 months to pull a building permit or it's nice knowing you. <laughs> wow. So uh, there's quite a gap between what we are typically expect and what this regulation, what this legislation is saying. Uh, not only with special cases, but with um, subdivisions as well. So, um, I, I guess I, <clears throat> I'm more intimidated uh, by the amount of approvals that are still in effect. <laughs> Is it retroactive? After, after I have said that they, are, they have expired, so I'm unsure of how retroactively that's gonna work. But um, and we're going to have to deal with those items as they come. I, I, I hope that, that this is more a um, we essentially strike the expiration section from the regulations. But maybe the town attorney has, has another thought on exactly how w w we should be approaching this. I, I, I agree with Jay. I, mean, I think we have to sit down and go through it because there's it's complicated. And it's like if it's expired as of this date or as if it's expired as of that date. So I think we have to we have to figure that out. I'm not really sure why. I and mean, that's a long period of time. And I'm not really sure why um, it's. <laughs> why 19? <laughs> you know, not 20. 19. <laughs> Absolutely. You know. So, but Jay and I can certainly go through it and figure out how to implement it or what to do. And we may have to just deal with what comes our way as if someone says, hey, I've got this project I want a, I want a building permit for. We'll just have to yeah. discuss that. But maybe. Um, um, so I would say take as much time as you need to <laughs> do this one. Um, I don't want, you know, as much as we're saying we're trying to, to you know, move quickly to, you know, protect ourselves. Let's not move too quickly. God forbid. Um, you know, so some of these, I mean, I, if some of these are, I don't know if any ever went to court and challenged them and then we've changed our regs, we had to go change them back. Uh, you might want to think about some creative approaches on this particular one. This, this is, Gail, this is the page you're going to want, meeting procedures, all kinds, of, all kinds of new work for you. Is that right? Is that on the you might retire. You might retire once you read that one. Yeah, you might. Yeah, I already mailed it to me. We may Actually. even have an extra copy floating around here, too. Oh, okay. I'll get you. You know what? I'll, I'll forward one to you right now just so that you have it. Okay. So, so I think maybe the best course of action as opposed to referring this to the Planning Commission for study or maybe might be to... Um, allow uh, Attorney Sullivan and I to kind of sit down and mm -hmm. wrap our brains around this one. I mean, we've yeah. got two years worth of work on these other things to do by next month. So we want like motion to have the town attorney and planning zoning director go over some of the. I don't think you need to motion it, but yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah. You want to make it? Let's just do it to be formal, so we know we affirmatively acted. So I'll take that as a motion for Mr. Francis. Uh, second, Ms. Manos. Any further discussion aside from, like I said, take your time and think strategically about this one. And, uh, you know, even if we have to put in something like some escape clause and say in conformance with state regulations, God forbid they change it. I don't expect to see much of a change in the legislature, but you never know. Um, you know, just do it, just be, think strategically and we can talk about it, obviously. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Carries unanimously. Boy, they weren't kidding, those were pretty heavy. And, and I'm just, I'll just add, there's, there's a bunch more items here that affect us, but not with immediate changes. Mm -hmm. uh, the trainings, as uh, Chairman Sulhavy mentioned, I, I, I'm a full support of this. I think it's I actually great. am too. I think it's a great idea to be, look, I, I am required my license to go to trainings and constantly learn about the, how land use law is evolving and changes and nothing, this is a perfect example that nothing stays the same. Yeah, it does. And as soon as you think it does, it has a monumental change. So, mm -hmm. you know, there are things like that, and, and uh, zoning enforcement officers are required to maintain a certification from the um, zoning enforcement 
zoning enforcement officers organization, which Dan will be, he's already ahead of this. He's been, uh, he's getting ready to do that this fall. So, um, you know, I think we're pretty much on top of most of all these other items on here, I, okay. I, I think. Excellent. So there is, there's the other one in here. This is, oh, where did I see it? Zo zoning cannot be used, at, where was I? Zoning cannot be used to uh, stop overcrowding. Yep. Oh, additional what? regulations, yeah. To do what? Uh, enables statutes 822 to remove language allowing zoning to be used to prevent the overcrowding of land and, un and avoid undue concentration of population. So basically we can't say, we can't set, it's almost, it kind of sounds like our, our lot size prohibitions are out the window and you know, if you've got an acre of land, you can put six houses on it because, you know, that's what I kind of read it as. As a builder, do you like that or no? <laughs> no, actually, I, actually, I don't. I, I don't. I really don't. I, I mean, I, I, I think, you know, I, I think part of part of town's charm, every town is different, every city's different, but part of a charm, uh, part of a, a city's charm is is the large populations and, and the you know the nightlife and all the, the proximity to everything and part of a town's charm is is its mm -hmm. space to move around um, and you know to have a backyard and have a play space for your kids and not to not to have you know eight 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 eighty U's whatever they call them eighty U's eighty U's on a one acre property when your house is in the front it just mm -hmm. it goes against you know character and they say you can't use character anymore but goes against character of a neighborhood or character of a home or, you know, you can have a mishmash of stuff all over the place and I just, yeah, we've all seen that. Appropriate. And I know it can be discouraging to read things like this sometimes, but there are a lot of things that are in here that have changed that I think or changed for the better that we're already doing. Mm. All, all, every municipality has to do a, a, a housing plan and it's due in a year. Ours is done. We're the first per we're the we're first, the first municipality in the state of Connecticut to, to do it. Well, and the state is using our our uh, planning program as a template for the other towns. Nice. So that's good. Uh, Congratulations to you guys. Yep. Well done. Thank you. Yep. Uh, as well as many other items that we're doing that we're doing on here, and we just need little tweaks. So, you know, I think there's it's not all bad news. <laughs> right. Model community we are. Huh? Word of that. <laughs> That's my goal. Yep. Okay. Uh, two. Anything else from this state? Okay. Uh, two items for other. Uh, first of all, I um, am in receipt of a uh, court decision, <laughs> and I just asked Attorney Sullivan to uh, just give us a quick status report as to where we stand on that. So we have a new decision from Judge Shaw on our 500, 500 North. Um, it is, uh, it's 40 pages and it's, and it's complicated, but the bottom line is that um, she um, was of the opinion that the, um, there should have been an approval that was heavily conditioned, including that the town engineer and the um, fire marshal would have to sign off on that, uh, that very tall retaining wall. So. We will be filing a petition for cert. I expect the applicant will also be filing a petition for cert, but that's uh, that's where we uh, stand right now. So stay tuned. It, she, it, she also included a remand to the commission. So um, we'll, you know we'll, we won't be doing anything until um, we hear whether the appellate court will hear us. Um, but uh, that's where it stands. And that's for 795 James Farm Road, for anyone who doesn't know. Who oh, yeah, 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 yeah. When, when, she mentioned, when she mentioned the very tall retaining wall, I knew. Yeah, I was say, you knew which one we were talking exactly about, yeah. Talking and this about. is application two. The yeah. first one was denied, appealed, and then sustained, so. Yeah. I'm surprised she wasn't, I guess she wasn't wowed by my very forceful, handwritten, con unanimous agreement, collective decision that we, we came to, you know? I, I, I guess not. And is it, is it my the life. same judge that, yes. that required <laughs> us to meet again? And it, did, it is. Yeah. It, it's, just, it's the same case. Yeah. So, you know, as the chairman just said, she 
didn't really say that our, the collective decision part was bad. She just sort of went off and then said, oh, and how about the balancing test? And if you get to the balancing test, then you, know, you need to balance the need for affordable housing against the project. And then she thought, well, maybe this project could be conditioned. Um, w addressing the same issues that this commission raised, which is that's a pretty big retaining wall that doesn't look, that looks well, like it's a public health and safety issue. Yeah. Um, as well as the fire trucks. I mean, if you remember, there's um, the there fire was a big issue about the, the fire trucks. Process, right. the so she's, ev right. Everything about it. Right. <laughs> so you're all welcome to read the decision, but um, it's, it is 40 pages, so. Um, Commissioner Fredette. Microphone. Your Rich, mic, Rich. Rich. Microphone. What was your question? Microphone. Issue. Uh, so this is not a victory for either side. So I, I think that's that's a, a good way to to wrap it up, which is that we we um, the expectation is that neither side is particularly happy with the with the decision. So. Okay. Okay, the other item that I wanted to bring to members' attention, um, and I know we've sort of flaunted it tonight, uh, it's really hard to do a meeting wearing a mask. I give you, uh, Attorney Sullivan, Mr. Bansky, a lot of credit. I, with all the talking I have to do today, it just wasn't feasible. My apologies. As you're aware, um, the COVID situation continues to change. Um, the, um, the, the applicant for the September 8th meeting uh, has requested a remote hearing, which after some consideration and discussion of the logistics, I granted, and that's why we're doing it that way, because running a hybrid meeting of some remote, some not remote, is just impractical at this point. Um, I, we're now at code red, I, we obviously can't, you know, uh, but we have more meetings coming up. Um, I'm perfectly comfortable staying in town hall I know some commissions are thinking about going back to remote, but I will take guidance from my members as to how they want to proceed, either in person or remote. And we can obviously, uh, you know, how, where we are at the end of September, where we're at the end of October, you know, might have a difference. I'm, I'm vaccinated and I, I guess I got only a few months ago, so I'm still good. but. You know, obviously I don't want to put any members in a bad position, so I just want some guidance from you guys. Do you want to stay in town hall or do you want to go back to remote? Mr. Henry. Um, have we had any issues with uh, any of our uh, previous approvals uh, yeah. that were done during remote and public access and, and uh, anything along those lines? I mean, have we been able to fully meet the, the regulatory um, I just wait for you to finish. Yeah. Uh, the regulatory uh, requirements laid out by the by our I don't know by our requirements. Well, I, I mean, I can answer that, but I'll also let uh, Attorney Sullivan answer as well. I mean, we've had one appeal over the past year. That appeal has been undecided. I, I feel like we have. Um, this is under the remote meetings. We've had one appeal. Um, and uh, that's been undecided as to whether or not procedures or the executive orders were legal. Um, I, f I feel and still feel that we have always met all notice requirements, all public hearing requ requirements, and all requirements for public commentary. So um, otherwise, I wouldn't have done it. Um, and, you know. So, so then, I mean, and, and I didn't, I just want to make sure that if we did go remote, per, my preference would be here in person. Um, you know, again, I've been vaccinated. I, I had it supposedly. I don't think I did, but they say I did. But um, I think, I think it, hopefully it's going to pass, but they say all people vaccinated, you know, the, the, the amount of people in the hospital are vaccinated are minimal. And those people have very, uh, in, not insignificant, but lesser symptoms. So I'd say, if you're asking me, we should continue to meet in person. Yep. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts, Mr. Vigliotti? I wear a mask all day at work anyway. Okay. So coming here to wear one, no, no. You're good to stay in town hall? Okay. Ms. Manos, Mr. Francis?
Okay, well, then you'll be even better next month. <laughs> Mr. Fredette, you good to stay? Okay, and staff? Okay, and so then we'll continue. Um, obviously, we're, gonna gr we're going to do the remote meeting on the 8th to accommodate the petitioners, and I mean, the petitioners may ask. I'll take them as a case-by-case -case basis, um, but uh, barring any major changes here, we'll stay remote. I mean, so we'll stay in town hall uh, moving forward, and we'll just keep up checking in on how things go. That's all we can do, we'll day by day. Mr. Bates. And I, I just have one question. Uh, well, actually, no, I'll, I'll, I'll talk with the uh, town attorney after this. Okay. Uh, any other goal setting, SAEP, recommendations, town council, POCD, TOD, anything else? Okay. So then our next meeting, despite what it says here, is the remote meeting on sep Wednesday, September 8th, 7 p.m. Um, and you'll obviously be getting your materials, and then we'll be back in chambers on September 22nd. You make a motion to adjourn. Mr. Francis, second. Ms. Manos, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Carries unanimously. We are adjourned at 9.41 p.m. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>